being the best takes persistence, patience, and great. Folks, no, I'm not Ronnie Hazard, and this is not Dennis Johns. In fact, it's probably about 30 minutes before game time, and they're still asleep. They'll be out here shortly, but right now I'm with here Rusty Dowling, coach of the Texas City Sting, state bound for fixing to take on the uh, Hereford uh, White Faces. And uh, Rusty, the biggest thing I'd like to know is this is your second trip to state, 1917. What's the biggest difference between these two teams? Well, you know, that, that's kind of a hard question. The 90, the 97 team, when we went into that state championship at Corsicana, the 97 team, that, that was a whole new experience because we'd never been there before. Now you come up to 99 and you, you draw upon those past experiences saying, okay, well, I remember at this point in time when we played Bay City or, or Clearbrook or, or our friends from Jacksonville, and you, you kind of get an idea on how to practice and what the expectations are and what you got to do and how you got to pace yourself. And you use that experience to help you get to get through. And it really does work. And there are experiences there that you do use. So having already been there and now coming back to it, um, you know, are we veterans? Well, you know, you kind of like think you're a veteran at it. It's a nice thing to be a veteran at. But uh, I think we got a handle on exactly what you got to do to prepare for a game. Now, playing the game and winning the game is an entirely different matter. But, but at least we know what we're doing as far as preparing for it. Well, I noticed uh, one of the things is you seem to have a lot more depth this year, and uh, you have players that just all of a sudden will step up when the time comes, and so you don't see any kind of lull in play at any time. No, you know, our, th that's a good point. You know, like, we're six deep at linebacker, and in 97, you know, we had Lansdale, we had Everett Rawls, we had Josh Martin, and that was pretty much it, you know, as far as varsity-type players go. Well, this year, you know, we got six linebackers, and the nice thing about it is most of them are back again next year, and uh, a couple of them two years uh, down the road. So you're right, we do have some depth in the offensive line. We've gone through, we started a third team center against Dallas. Uh, we're three deep at the tailback, we're three deep at the fullback. We got a backup quarterback, Brandon Tolden, that does a great job. So we do have some depth there. And when you go through the playoffs and you get banged up and bruised up and knocked around a little bit, that is very important. So uh, depth is a key factor for uh, for the run in the playoffs. Well, another, another thing this year is, is in the 97 run the state, there were so many close games, in fact. I think uh, Ronnie almost had a heart attack on a couple of them. And this year, it seems like uh, we've been able to get everybody to play because the scores have been so uh, overbalanced. Well, we're trying to be health-friendly through, through the playoffs. You know, we're, 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 we realize the stress that we put our 97 fans through, and, and we realized in 98 they were still recovering a little bit from 97. So we went in this just trying to, you know, take that into consideration and everything. But, uh, <laughs> you know... And if you believe that, then uh, then then I don't know. Uh, no, that you know the blowouts are, uh, and we've had a couple of them. You know, the, I mean, they're great. You know, you're going into the fourth quarter and you're in the you're you're in the semifinal round, and you know it's going to be a tooth and nail fight. And all of a sudden, you look up at the scoreboard; it's 45 to nothing against a good football team, too. And you wonder, well, are we lucky? Are they not that good? Are we really that good? And you still have a lot of questions unanswered. And yet, we're going into the 14th game of the year, into the state championship game, and you're still kind of wondering. Are we that good, or were our opponents not that good, or did we, you know, were all those turnovers, were they that big of a, of a factor in the game? Uh, last week, Alice turned the ball over eight times. You can't beat anybody. I don't care who you are, turn the ball over that many times. And so, uh, uh, you know, as far as where we're at and what we're doing and everything else, you know, it's, 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 been, a, it's been a little easier than, I think, 97 as far as the scores go. But, again, I, you know, with, with Hereford coming up, you know, they're a very, very good football team, as Corsicana was in 97, so as we all remember that. So uh, we're expecting a real good ball game. You know. I know the 97 state game was probably the ideal game. It came down to the last, and uh, I hope that's the way this game turns out. At least it's going to be a good game one way or the other. Well, it was ideal for the fans. Now, for us that were on the sidelines there, it was nothing short of a nightmare for us, you know. But uh, uh, th this playoff run has just been a little bit better on, on our nerves, certainly on my nerves. I know that. Uh, well, you know, half the half the fun of the of the fans in the in the sideline is watching the coaches sweat, not necessarily watching the game. <laughs> well, I'm glad my distress, you know, is 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 a, is a good thing for some people because you know that's why I got all this gray hair. You know, I had black hair when I got here, jet black hair when I got here, and then coaching the Stingerees for nine years and going through the playoffs and everything, you know, it's 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 been turned considerably gray, you know. Well, you know, they they say uh, a lot of times when you have a dog that after a while you've been with them so long they start to look like them. And uh, I've had this comment said to me before. They said, you got the dowling look. Oh, the gray hair. The gray hair, just from you. 
Well, I'm glad I could be an influence, you know. I'm, gl I'm glad I could help out, you know. At least, a, you know, positive influence, maybe. I don't, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> I, I always tell people, you know, I did. When I moved here, I had jet black hair. And then when I started coaching at Texas City, goodness sakes, it turned gray in a hurry. So, but it's a nice gray. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I don't mind it at all. All right, Rusty. Well, we'll let you get back to the game because we know it's going to start here shortly. And Ronnie and Dennis, we got to go wake them up. So uh, we uh, hope a lot of luck, and, and it's been great. It has been great. You know, we hope we can just take it that one step and, and bring Texas City home a state championship. Our kids have worked hard. Coaches have worked hard. Community has, has just been fantastic. So hopefully we can take the next step and get it done. Oh, yes. I'd like to say something right here about the community. Uh, when we thought we could do this live, we said that we would probably have to have funding. It was unbelievable how much Texas City stepped out there and said, tell us what you need, we'll do it. And uh, if we hadn't got pulled by Fox, we'd be on the air. Well, you know, I think that's just indicative of the support we get. You know, you turn around the dome and you look up and you see all the people up there. It is just fantastic. And, and that's, that's one of the reasons why we're where we're at, because of the support of the community and the school district. So we're just happy to represent Texas City, and we just got to go out and win a ball game. Appreciate it, Rusty. Okay. See you all. I was able to drag Coach Brown out here for a few minutes before the game. Coach, um, we've asked everybody, what, you, know, you feel like there's a lot of difference between this team and the 97 team, or is there similarities? Oh, there's a lot of similarities in the 1997 and uh, the 1999 team. Both teams were rushing, you know, or rushing teams, and, uh, you know, uh, four quarterbacks are similar. They're both very mobile. We've got uh, Adrian Daniels, the 2,000-yard rusher in 97, and uh, Frank's closing in on that right now. We had some big offensive linemen. With Tommy O'Connell this year, we got EJ and we got Roy and Travis and uh, Aaron and uh, Jamie Spencer, and then we got a big tight end this year, T.G. Boggs, which we had Josh Hall back in '97. And the receiver core this year is very similar too. They're, I mean, they're great blockers and they catch the ball and we throw it to them. Man, I didn't really realize that. The biggest thing we've noticed is at the end of the games, there's there's really nothing close. It games seem to uh, Texas City goes in and dominates and and finishes and walks off and no big hup to do you uh contribute that to anything that's special well that's the way we practice we teach the kids just approach it you know as business and go out there and we usually try to wear them down by you know the second third quarter and take the edge off them a little bit and the big plays will come on offense uh because you know they pile up eight or nine on the line of scrimmage and uh just got to be patient look for the big play and hopefully it comes that's one of the things i think i've seen with this team is very patient it just works in a pace that uh, I guess y'all set for them. Do you, you call every play or do they get to make choices or how's that work? No, it's a, a staff thing. We script plays, you know, for the first half and then we go in there and halftime make adjustments and script some plays for the second half. But we have people upstairs helping us call plays, uh, Coach Guerrero and then uh, Coach Carter, all the coaches have the input during the game. And what we do, we just try to take advantage of whatever they give us at the time. Coach Brown, you got a great staff and we'll let you get to the game and we're, we're hoping for a win. And I hope we can deliver. We're going to do our best. Of course, you know anything about Sting football, you know Coach Finn. Coach, tell us a little bit about this team this year. Uh, how do you feel it compares to the 97 team? Well, I think uh, this team this year, we have been very consistent. I mean, we have been very consistent on offense, very consistent on defense, very consistent on special teams. And I think that's... Uh, that, that's why they've been successful. They play well together and they play on both sides of the football and have done an outstanding job of that. So I, I think that's why the, the kids have uh, had the success they've had this year. Well, Rusty mentioned that uh, y'all have the experience from the 97 season that's helping you go through the playoffs here. Do you feel like that that has been a considerable help or do you think that y'all have just gone one game at a time? Well, I think it's a combination of both. The fact that we've been there I think that everything, everybody's more comfortable with it. The kids are. We've got a good nucleus of kids that were on the team. Uh, they're comfortable with where we're at. They took each week uh, like it was just another game, and, and that's why uh, they never got to, uh, and we've used the saying, you, you uh, don't put the prize before the preparation. So, uh, and that's what we've used with them this week especially is, uh, the prize is there, we got to prepare for it, and it'll be ours. So, uh, And that's what we want them to do, and that's what they've done a good job of. No matter who they line up in front of us, we've been able to prepare ourselves to play them. So, and they've done a good job of that. Uh, we have noticed that, that there's this team doesn't have anything that's showy or anything. They just go out and do the job. Now, 
the close games, do you miss those? I mean, we've not really had a close game this year. Well, I, I think if uh, you ask the fans and the coaches, maybe at the end of a game, as long as you win, they love those close ones. But it's a lot less stressful on everybody when uh, they're not so close. And uh, well, I'll tell you what, I will take a, a uh, convincing, relaxing win over a, a heartbreak. Uh, a stressful one anytime so well tell me on this last game I mean would you believe that at the end of the game you'd see a 45 to nothing score well absolutely not I think Alice is a real good football team and they're a very well coached football team and and the thing that we did was we made the big plays against them we made we caused the turnovers uh, when we when we got in good field position we put the ball in the end zone and and that was a big thing they moved the ball a, a lot on us and uh, so our kids made the plays when they needed to. They stopped the drives when they needed to. Alice easily could have been up seven to nothing in that game. It might have been a different game, but our kids made the plays. So uh, no, I didn't expect that kind of score, but it sure was nice in the fourth quarter. Well, have you said anything special for this team that you're playing? Have you had to change anything? Are you just going to do the same thing you've always done? Well, you know, the, this, what's great about the staff and the people I've been working with, most of us, we got a good nucleus that's been here the entire time. So when we go into a face a team like Hereford, uh, usually there's somebody along the line that we faced that was similar to what they do. And uh, we kind of refer back to that time and the coaches know uh, what we need to do. And, and uh, they've worked with me for a long time and, and the same for our offensive staff. We, we've seen a lot of things in our experiences in the last uh, seven, eight years. And, and uh, that really helped us when we go to prepare for somebody. Well, you've seen just another one of the excellent coaches right here in Texas City. We've got to get to the football game, Coach. Lots of luck. Thanks. Welcome back. I'm here with Tiso Ramirez. Tiso, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I'm a D lineman, a senior. I've been playing on varsity for two years, starting. Uh, but, That's about it, right? About it. Well, tell us a little bit about the team this year. You know, uh, in the past, we've come up with the stings, and they've been loud and boisterous when they broke through. But this team, this team seems to be a little more quiet and reserved. Is there a reason for that? Are you just going down to do business or what? All it is teamwork. Mm, we play together where we coach. Coach good. Mm, do what we're supposed to do. Y'all got close fellowship? Mm, yes, we do. Very good. Tell me, uh, which game stands out most for you for this whole year? Beating Lamarck. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> are you looking forward to the state game? Uh, yes, I am. Hoping to win, too. Uh, hoping or are you just going to win? Well, do what I can to win. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll come back right after this word. Welcome back again. I'm here with Anthony Tranchina. Anthony, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a wide receiver. I'm a punt returner. I'm a senior. I've been on varsity for two years, and I also play sting baseball. Uh, we've watched you uh, turn a, return a lot of balls. Uh, is that your favorite position? Yes, sir. Uh, I just like the excitement and the uh, enthusiasm. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, tell us, which game stood out the most this year for you? Probably for me would probably be the Nederland game because my absence in the Lamarck game. So the Nederland game was pretty exciting overall, though. So. That was an excellent game for you. It really was. And are you looking forward to the state game? Oh, yeah. Anytime you're playing the state game, it's your emotions are going to be running high. So I'm really looking forward to this, and I think our team is too. So hopefully we can... Just take it as another ball game and take it to the next level and bring home a ring. Well, do you think this team is a well-disciplined team or just a close team? Well, we're a little bit of both. Uh, we've been together ever since seventh grade, us seniors, and uh, we play well together. And uh, also, we're re uh, really disciplined due to our coaching. Our coaching's real good and one of the best I've ever seen. So we're honored to have them as coaches as well. So. So basically, we go hand in hand with a little bit of both. So hopefully, we'll do well. Well, as everyone knows, here with Anthony and all the other Sting, they're going to go into the record books with the best record so far of any Sting team. And if they take state, then they'll have all the records. Back to y'all. This is the closest I've been to the Stings in a long time. I'm here with Jason Daly. Jason, tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm a senior. I uh, play defensive end and. Uh, this is my first year starting, and uh, we've been doing pretty good. Yeah, so you're doing real good. Which game stands out most in your mind? Oh, uh, no question, Lamarck. It was just all the people, all the hype, beating them at, on their home turf our senior year. It's everything we wanted. And you're ready for the state game? Oh, yeah. 
this is our ultimate goal of the season, and we've come through, played as a team, and been doing what we had to do. When you go into the locker room in halftime, what kind of mood is it? You know, and of course, in most cases, y'all have always been on the lead. But how is the mood in the locker room? We, we, that's one aspect of the game we never get to see. Well, we try to stay focused, you know, even though if we're winning sometimes, you know, sometimes we've been down against the mark, and, you know, you just got to keep focused no matter you're winning or losing and go back and execute and keep doing what you're doing. Well, that's what's making you guys champions. All right, back to you. All right, we're back here with another thing, Jonathan Couturi. Jonathan, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a senior, and I play defense, strong safety, and pretty much on all the special teams. Tell me, uh, what game stood out most for you this year? Had to be Lamarck, them being our rivals, and we beat them on their home turf. And that's one thing we set out to do this year is beat Lamarck. You know, I think uh, if any time that y'all beat Lamarck, you basically felt like your whole season is finished, right? You don't have to do anything else. Uh, we had a lot left. We knew it felt like we won state after that game, but we knew we had a long road ahead of us, and we're finally here. It's our ultimate goal. Tell me, uh, was Lamarck your toughest game, or do you feel like that you, you've reached other opponents along the line afterwards that were a little tougher? I'd have to say our toughest three games were Lamarck, Needlin, and Lamar. They all, they were good competition, you know, and the rest of the teams you know, kind of been blowouts, but uh, they were our closest games, and we found out what we were made of when we played them. Do you feel like this is a real focused team? We're really focused, you know, we play well as a team. We don't have the best athletes, but we play well as a team, and we get the job done. Well, you said something right there. It's always amazing. We can watch your games and, and think, well, they're not really doing a whole lot out there. But once that game is over, you look at the scoreboard, you think, they just blew these guys away. And just we're, we're really proud of you guys, and we appreciate you uh, doing your job. Yeah, we never really set out to blow anybody out. We're just there to get the win, and it ends up happening, and... I like I like blowing teams out better than the close games. Um, the close games, I mean, we find out what we're made of, but the blowouts, you know, everybody gets to play, and we're more relaxed. I understand. All right, let's see if we can get this game going. Well, you may not know me, but you can't pass these guys up. Each one of you kind of introduce yourselves, although they don't need an introduction. I'm Frank Gorham, number 33 for Texas Stingery. I'm Dwight Simpson, number 35, Tech City Stingarees. I'm uh, Marcel Mose, the one for Tech City Stingarees. Each one of these gentlemen played on the 97 state team. And I think one of the biggest questions I think everybody's wondered this year is, the 97 team was a very boisterous team, very outgoing. In fact, uh, your brother was probably the loudest one of the bunch. <laughs> We've noticed this year, though, y'all are very quiet, reserved, and seem to be... Um, more as a, a brotherhood than a team. Uh, how do y'all feel about this? Let me start with you. Uh, as far as that, um, it, it doesn't matter how loud or quiet you get on the team as long as you win ball games. And 97 did that, and so are we, so that's all that matters. Good point, good point. How about yourself? Uh, all I can say is uh, we come out and we play hard as a team. The offense relates with the defense and so forth, and we practice, we practice well as a team, and, and we have great leadership by our fans. Frank Gorham, Marcel Moses, and the rest of us. And I think that's what, what the key is to winning games. That's well put. Now, I, there is always an exception to the rule. Now, I said that this team was a little quiet. We do have still have Marcel over here. Marcel, tell us about uh, how do you feel the difference between the two teams? Uh, well, this, this team right here, uh, we play as a family, like you said earlier. Uh, but when, when the uh, kickoff starts, it's time to get pumped, you know, everybody getting loud and rowdy up uh, on the sideline. And and um, we saw kicking some, you know, some tails sometime and making people get a little bit hype, you know. All right. What I want you all to do is watch these guys today because you're going to see some excellent football. And, of course, unfortunately, we won't get to see Marcel out there, but we'll still watch for him on the sideline. Back to you guys. Game. 
fix the start. We're late. We slept. Oh, we got 20 minutes. God. Surely Russ do a weight on us, you think? Yeah, they'll wait on us. Let's go. We got to get there. Come are, on. Are the swing fans here yet? Is that what I hear? I think it is. Oh, my God. I know God. it's fixing the start. We, you got butt head, man. What, what am I going to do? We've got to get there. It's time for Singery football. Woo! At the Bond Truck, Chevy Old Toyota on the Gulf Freeway at Texas City, we have got it all. If you're looking Hello everybody and welcome to Texas Stadium. Ronnie Hazard along with Dennis Johns as both crowds are getting into it. Dennis, it's finally, I think the rain has stopped for a second. Well, you just said that as right before we put the headsets on, I looked out and I saw a big old clap of lightning. Uh, and hopefully that's not going to bring a little bit more rain, but it has been raining all day long. Left Texas City this morning at what, 8, eight, eight o'clock. It rained on us the whole way and sitting through a couple of uh, quarters here, it has just been a downpour. Well, in case you're wondering what we're talking about, folks, we are here in Texas Stadium, home of the Dallas Cowboys for the Class 4A Division I State Championship game from Texas Stadium here in Irving. The Texas City Stingerees bringing a 13-0 record in tonight against the Herford White Faces at 13-1, actually really known as the Herford Herd. That's right. From up in uh, D. Smith County, up in northeast, uh, excuse me, northwest, the Panhandle of Texas. And I tell you what, they have, uh, they have, put together a, some some of the stories I've read said a Cinderella season, but I think this team, the herd, wearing a maroon today, I think they're for real. Well, they're definitely for real. You know, we talked about the rain as we, as we came up, Dennis, and, and uh, it has just been a downpour, and when you played in the Astrodome for four weeks in a row, it makes a little bit of difference. You know, I think the difference is that, that back in Houston, I guess there's more money because they knew how to finish the dome. Huh? <laughs> I guess that's right. And we looked up all ago and thought, man, the rain is coming in here. What's going on? I don't understand. And uh, you realize that the Stinks have not played outside in a month, it's four four weeks in the dome. Well, that's right. Yeah. You, you don't realize how good you've got it in the dome until you come up to something like this as the singery fight song is going on. Texas City, as we said, this is this looking to finish off the first undefeated season in the history of the school. Texas City winning the state championship in 97. This is their second time in three years to be in this position. And I tell you what, what, a, what an incredible turnaround that Rusty Dowling has done with the Texas City program. Boy, it really has. And just, you know, every week it seems to be, uh, just see more and more class out of the program that he's put together. He's put together a great coaching staff and has, has just really developed a sense of pride among the students, among the community. And it's just neat to see, neat to be a part of that, really, Ronnie. Well, we're on, we're on the first row of the upper deck here on the Vister side, uh, the Herford crowd is down below us, Texas City on the far side, which makes it kind of nice. A good representative representative crowd from Texas City. Understand this between buses, I mean, between cheerleaders and fans and stuff, there was right around 14 buses that came up. That's right. And of course, you know, there's probably a lot more folks yet to come in here. This place was experienced gridlock. Uh, we, uh, it is 8.15 right now. We're not due to start for about another 10 minutes or so, or possibly five or six minutes. But uh, we had a, an overtime game with uh, South, South Garland and Grand Garland and South Grand Prairie. There you go. And uh, just just finished that. Garland won that game in overtime. And then the game before that, a great matchup between Stephenville and Ennis. And Ennis uh, gave Stephenville all they wanted today, but Stephenville came out the victor in that one. So there's been some awesome football played here. Well, on that's the, right. On the you floor. were talking about that. A field goal won the game, the 5A game, the 4A game. Stephenville wins it with a field goal with less than 10 seconds that's right. in the ball game. Special teams. Well, folks, we're going to take a break, send it back to the studio and take a break here for just a minute, and then we'll be back and talk about the Herford Herd. You're listening to the Steam Sports Network. Stadium, <laughs> Dennis, you said we are going to talk a little bit about the Herford Herd. What can you tell us about the white faces? Well, i tell you what, I've... As, uh, as we've checked up on this and been studying the herd a little bit, I've been really impressed with this uh, this team from up in, like I say, D. Smith County in west northwest Texas in the Panhandle. They come into the end of the season just uh, really hot. Uh, they have played how they got here. Let's look a little bit about how they got here. They uh, Their first playoff game was a game against the Plainview Bulldogs. They beat Plainview 26-15, to 15, and that was a, a tough, tough game. That was really probably one of the toughest contests that they've had this season. From there to uh, play to El Paso Isleta, that was in Odessa at Ratliff Stadium. And uh, pretty well had an easy time with El Paso. It beat them 42-7. to Coming up to the next game against Weatherford, and that was a, uh, in fact, some of the folks we talked 
too, said that the guys after the game, both teams just left it all out on the field, and they, they were exhausted after the game. Win that game 24-21 to 21 in the closing seconds of the game with a field goal, again, and some heroics from that team. And then last week, defeating Waco Midway in Shotwell Stadium in Ab Abilene by a score of 33-17. to 17. They, uh, they have put together, expect to see some powerful offense. They've got uh, Cody Hodges. And you tell us a little bit about Cody. You got some stats there. Well, what we looked at was what the first thing we saw when we talked about the uh, asking about the offense of the Hereford Herd is that they have a wide open offense. Immediately ever, Cody Hodges, as you said, the junior quarterback, has been a starter since his freshman year. He's thrown uh, 165 completions out of 242 passes for 2,260 yards, 23 touchdowns. He's thrown uh, 11 interceptions. The, the thing that impresses me most about him, in the regular season, he completed 67% of his uh, passes and in the playoffs is up that to 75 percent his favorite receiver a kid by the name of slade hodges his twin brother <laughs> and slade is called uh, had 51 receptions for 840 yards nine touchdowns the interesting thing they're uh, uh the running back the tailbacks this year uh, has went out injured vallejo went out injured in the last regular season game he's been replaced by romero zambrano who is no slouch himself, has, I think, gained over 100 yards in every game in the playoffs. That's right. He has almost 500 yards in four games and really have not skipped a beat with uh, with Zambrano in there at that spot. Just some of the some of the things uh, coming into this game, Herford averages four. They've averaged 33 points a game. Texas City averages 34 points a game. Going to be an offensive shootout. They, uh, the Herford herd allows, over the season, 10.5 points a game. Texas City allows nine points a game. So it's pretty matched as far as teams allow, uh, points allowed and points scored here. So, it's, again, we're, we're expecting just a great shootout here tonight on the floor of the Texas Stadium. Well, I think we've already got maybe a little bit of the mind game going as the Hereford Herd have come out of the tunnel. They're ready to break through their banner. Their captains, the five of them, standing at midfield with the official and the Texas City squad still yet to be heard from uh, as they're still waiting to come out of the tunnel. We see a couple of coaches coming out now. As Dennis, look over to your left there, coming out of the tunnel on the far side, is a huge Herford white face bull. Holy cow. <laughs> Holy cow look is at right. That cow. That's got to be 20 feet tall. I tell you what, we could feed all of Texas City for a week <laughs> on the beef in that boy. Having a hard time pulling him in here, too. Well, I'd hate to have to clean up after him. Yeah, what I'm saying. I heard that. Texas City is starting to come out of the tunnel as the captain for, for the Herford herd, number 31, LJ. Vallejo, number 69, Joseph Gonzalez, number 55, Daniel Fangman, number 58, Curtis Flood, and number 11, Andrew Ramirez. And for the Stings, Roy Swan, E.J. Whitley, T.J. Boggs, and Marcel Moses. No, don't get excited. Marcel is not suited out tonight. He's in street clothes, and uh, he will not be playing tonight's contest. I'll tell you what, it, a tough break for Marcel. He is, is uh the heart and soul of that defense, but uh, we're going to listen in on the officials as the point says. We can't hear the coin flip, but as uh, just as the coin is flipped, Texas City comes out, and that's the roar that you heard is the uh, contingency of fans that are over on the far side. The herd. We'll receive the ball first as we get ready to start action here. Texas City on the field. Herford now standing in the end zone, ready to break through their banner as the captains have met, as we talked about Marcel, in case you missed it, in the last game against Dallas for the ACL. will undergo surgery later uh, in the month, I understand. I believe that's right. From what I understand, wants to get ready for the uh, some of the uh, some of the opportunities that he has in uh, maybe the All-Star game, some things like that, be prepared for that. And the Herford Herd are on the field. And the uh, crowd, I, I will not say they're about even. Herford has brought a couple of sections more than Texas City, even though they've had to travel further. They, uh, they have shown up here in, in mass. They have definitely brought the folks with them. You know, we, uh, we had a good time. Uh, we think it was uh, Thursday morning on the radio, the uh, KPAN, KPAN up in Herford uh, called me, and we talked on the phone at a little lighthearted bet going there. As, as we, uh, they put up uh, a Herford brisket against some Gulf shrimp, and we'll see who gets what. Uh, we had a lot of fun. They were telling me that they have their, their second string running back in uh, Zambrano. They've been clocked at 100 miles an hour, and that's in the cow pasture, but uh, <laughs> that's yet to be determined here on turf. So. Well, <laughs> hopefully we won't get him a chance to get up to that speed. And, you know, Mayor Dole will be proud because we brought a couple of those uh, Texas City 
the Millennium T-shirts with us and That's gave right. those to the K-Pan guys. That's right. And, you know, they're proud to wear them. In fact, they're probably up there wearing them now. You know they are. Yeah, they, I'm sure they are. <laughs> you know, they, they wouldn't let on to it. Gave them a, 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 a T-shirt for the All-American City as well and That's some right. bumper stickers to put on the car to ride back to Hereford with. The Hereford Herd are on the field. We're awaiting the Singeries. Number five, that's the tailback Romero Zambrano, the junior, will be standing back deep in the middle. He'll have number eight, Tony Lopez, on one side of him. And Jose Garcia, number 26, well, those, that rounds out the three guys back deep for the herd as Texas City huddles up around Coach Rusty Downing. As we said, they're yet to take the field, but Bobby Garza will be kicking off first. We'll get to look at that potent offense of the herd. The lineup just understand mostly in the shotgun formation. That's right. They run a wide open offense. You want to make some comparisons, perhaps, to the Friendswood game. They run a just a wide open offense. You'll see uh, from the shotgun. You may see one back. You may see two wide outs. You may see four wide outs. They just uh, it's wide open all the time. Texas City in black, They're getting to go back uh, back in black tonight. They'll be going from the right to the left. And uh, Herford Hurd shows up tonight with their maroon pants, white jerseys, and maroon helmets. We call them the white faces. They have HH on their helmets, so we'll just go ahead and call them Hurd. It's much easily, <laughs> much easier to do that. That's right. So I guess you call the Stingeries the Stings. You can call the white faces the Hurd. Call yeah. them the Hurd. That, that's right. That's what I see signs up that say they they got they call them the Hostile Hurd. And the and final Hostile Hurd, the final word. I believe that's their battle cry for the season. The Hereford team, this is their first time in a state championship game. As we said, Texas City second. The referee has pointed to Bobby Garza, and we're just about underway. Garza checks his special teams unit, and the fight for a Division I state championship game is underway as Bobby Garza, with a patented kick, puts it about three yards deep in the end zone. The Herd watch it bounce out of bounds, and they'll take the ball first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. These guys are fired up. It's a lot of fun to look at there. Look down there and see just the uh, the excitement, the Texas Bowl. Folks, this is it. it. It just doesn't get much better than this as far as high school athletics is concerned. Well, that's exactly right. You, you definitely said a mouthful, Dennis. I mean, there's I mean, there's no more games after this that's one it. in your division. I mean, this is the best of the best right here. As we say, wide open set, two men to the far side, two men to the near side. Zambrano is the lone back from the shotgun. Man in motion is Tony Lopez, goes to the far side. There's the snap. The give is to Zambrano. He goes to the right Nothing side. He's doing. smothered. Dwight Simpson, Tiso Ramirez. Welcome to Texas Stadium. That's right. Five, seven yards back behind the line of scrimmage. And that's going to do it. It'll be a six-yard loss is where they'll actually now actually look at the forward progress. They're going to give him to the 17-yard line. So it's only going to be a loss of three. But, man, he, he didn't even have a chance to do a thing with the ball that time. Well, a couple of keys. We didn't talk about keys to the game. I think really the keys, Ronnie, for a Texas City win is going to have to be put pressure on Hodges and keep the pressure there. And also, Dennis, on the running plays, they're going to have to contain the option. That's right. And in third, last and third be pretty simple, but establish the running game on offense. Same set. Two men wide both sides. Man in motion is Lopez again. Comes to the near side. Puts three men on the near side. Pressure is there. Hodges gets out of it. He's going to pick up a couple of yards back to the original. No, back almost to the original line of scrimmage as he is taken down pretty effectively. Nathan Hardwick in on the stop, the first black jersey there for Texas City as Hodges gets back just shy of the 20-yard line. That's going to make it third and 10. We'll call it third and 10, actually about third and 10 and a half. Boy, Hard Hardwick has had a great season. As I look at stats, the defensive stats, out of nine categories, he is a uh, he's a leader in four of those nine categories. Has uh, an assist, 62 assisted tackles, 16 tackles for loss, three forced fumbles, three recovered fumbles. As Hodges in the shotgun on the third and 10 has wide, double wide outs to both sides, takes a snap, two-step drop, looking for somebody got the screen pass out here to the near side across the 20, 25, and going to be stopped short of the first down is number five, Romero Zambrano. Texas City holds on the first offensive possession for the herd. That's right. You're going to see that play, Ronnie. Did. When the receivers are covered, Zambrano just slips out over into the flat, and uh, he's just going to be basically just a, a little outlet for the uh, for the herd tonight he was the outlet but didn't get the yardage that he needed it'll be one yard shy of the first down and in comes actually in stays cody hodges he also does the punting short anthony trancina standing back at his own 30 yard line to receive the punt nine yard pass on that play brought up a third and one snap is good not much of a rush by tech city and off the side of his foot a line drive hits the ground at the 40 takes a herd 
bounce and will be stopped dead just inside the 30-yard line. Well, you talk about the effect tonight of, of what's happened so far. The rain has just caused, in the middle of the field, it's kind of drained to the side. Of course, there's a crown here at Texas Stadium, so the, the field's going to drain a little bit. But over near the sidelines, basically from the yard markers on out, uh, it is just, when you hit the ground, it's just water splashes everywhere. That's right. And that ball hit and splashed and just scooted and on like it was walking on water. That's right. 41 yards on the punt. Texas City. Nice to see number 52 for Texas City in its center. That's Jamie Spencer back after missing two games. That's right, boy. It's nice to see him back. Tranchina comes in motion to the near side. Two men in the backfield. Tranchina makes his way over. Dotton gives to, gives to Gorham. Gorham, if he's able to slip outside, has a man a hold of him. Picks up six on the carry as he just kind of bounces outside and almost breaks away. Seth Pitsick on the stop for the herd, but not before a gain of seven or for, call it six, second and four for Texas City as they just go off, off the tackle. That's right. You know, I didn't talk about the game. We didn't talk to coaches about the game plan, but I would guarantee that probably they're going to talk about establishing the run, just going to basically take it right at them. Fisher and Gorham in the backfield as Dotton takes the signal. Anthony Lazarin comes in motion from the wide, the, the far side, the snap. Give it to Fisher up the middle. He's got the first down across the 40, still on his feet, and finally brought down at the 44-yard line for a Texas City first down. Following behind Jamie Spencer, T.J. Boggs, and Aaron Flanagan, he was just uh, just basically had a little uh, bus ride there. That's right, and I tell you what, this is exactly what we talked about, establishing the running game in Texas City. <laughs> They're not going to pull any punches. Rusty Dowling has said all year long, hey, Frank Gorham's our go-to guy, but we're just going to play smash mouth, smash mouth football. That's right. Jamie Spencer breaks the huddle first as the rest of the team follows suit. Kevin Johnson wide to the near side. Trancina wide to the far side. In the eye. Dotton checks the signals. Gives the first man of three. Fisher across the 50, still on his feet, 45. And finally brought down at the 43-yard line of the herd. Well, he just squirted out there. Followed his, uh, followed his block, squirted out, and it's just a great little gainer there for, for uh, Carl Fisher. Nice, nice job following behind the blocks of, again, that side of the line, E.J. Whitley and company on the right side, blowing the holes. The quick opener on that one, and Fisher just takes advantage of the hole. That's right. Hey, if you're just joining us, it's 8.30 p.m. if you're on the radio and you're wondering what's the deal. It's, we've uh, got 8.14 left here in the first quarter, no score. Texas City on their first possession as a late start here in Texas Stadium. First and 10, it's, they just picked up their second first down of the drive. Pitch goes to Gorham looking for something across the 45, and not much there as he gets maybe a yard out of it. And he's down at the 44. Well, Actually, little, no game. Exactly. A little toss play, and you know that's the bread and butter for Texas City. And I guarantee you that that's something that's been run over and over out in the plains of Hereford as they prepared for this week. You don't think they've seen film on Frank Gorham <laughs> running, huh? Guarantee you that. <laughs> Anthony Trancina comes in with the play from the sideline. Anthony Lazarin goes out. Second and 10. The ball sitting on the Hereford 44-yard line as the team breaks the huddle and comes to the line of scrimmage. Trancina will be wide here to the near side. Fisher and Gorham in the backfield. Dotton takes the snap, gives it to Gorham. He's across the 40. Got a couple of white jerseys hanging on, and Frank gets up to the 37-yard line. Seth Pysik again, the man who grabbed the jersey, considered the tackler there. Gorham picks up about seven on the play, straight up the middle, on the to the basically to the right side of the line. That will make it third and three for Texas City at the Herford. 37-yard line as the team comes to the line of scrimmage. Lazarin comes to the near side. Two men in the backfield, Fisher and Gorham. Two tight end set. Third and three. Gives to Gorham. He busts through. Has a first down, down to the 30-yard line. Actually, we're going to call it the 31-yard line. First down, Texas City. Seth Fitzek again on the stop. We're calling his name a lot. He is the senior strong side linebacker, and I believe he's going to have his work cut out for him tonight. I believe so, and uh, they he will see a lot of action. He's going to be the uh, going up the middle. He's the, he's the man they'll run to. Well, that's three first downs now on this opening drive for Texas City. 6.30 and counting to play in the first quarter. No score here from Texas Stadium as Anthony Trancina comes wide to the far side on the first and 10 play. Fisher and Gorham, Fisher goes in motion. They're Fisher's got play. it on the misdirection. He's at the 30, 25, lots of room. 15, cuts upside, 10, throw his feet, 5, touchdown, Carl Fisher from 31 yards out. 
Well, I tell you what, little counterplay. This one uh, worked for us last week as well against, uh, I believe, against Dallas. Actually, it's been a great go-to play all year long, and just kind of surprised them. Kind of key on Frank Gorham and let Fisher take it outside. Just bounced outside, got a good block downfield from Anthony Tranchina, and the Stings go on top, 6-0 with an extra point to come. Brandon Tolden in for the hold. Bobby Garza to attempt the extra point. You know, it's, what a great call. Everybody's looking for Frank Gorham to get the ball just about every play. Give it to give it to Fisher on the counter, and 31 yards later, six on the board. Snap is a little high. Tolden does a good job of getting it down. The kick is up, and it's good. So with 6-10 to play here in the first quarter, Texas City 7, Perford nothing. We'll be back in just a minute. This is your Sting Sports Network. You could say my sons are the executive type because they do make a lot of important decisions and they do sell a lot of cars. Back in Texas Stadium here in Irving, Texas City takes the seven to nothing lead on their first possession. Dennis, you know, we talked a little bit about it at the beginning of the game. Well, I mean, pretty pretty simple no-brainer on the, uh, the scoring drive. There you see the Texas First Bank scoring deposit. Seven plays, 70 yards, took three minutes and 31 seconds off the clock, capped off by the 31-yard Carl Fisher run. Texas City needed to establish the running game, and did they ever establish it? Well, they sure did. Nice drive. Garza, kick is a squib kick right up the middle of the field, picked up by Lopez. Lopez takes it up the middle. He's got a seam. Got a He's huge. at the 40, 45, 50. Bobby Garza, Garza hits him, man. and Warren Wilson's going to have to bring him down at the 40-yard line. Big run back, Tony Lopez of the herd. And they're back, baby. That's right. You knew they weren't going to lay down and die. And what a big run back for Lopez as he picks the ball up and goes down to the Stingery 39-yard line. Took it on the 15. So the Hereford Herd on their second offensive possession of the night will have great field position in Stingery territory. Lopez, 46 yards on the return. Took the squib at about the 15-yard line. And uh, here's the herd. Two men wide each side from the shotgun is Hodges. Faked inside, looking to pass downfield, looking for an open man. Has nobody. He breaks a tackle. Going to be brought down by James Fitch, the first Texas City man there. Marcus Ray, the second one on the tackle. Pickup of about five, maybe six. We'll call it five. Little B, second down and five. The ball on the Stingery 34-yard line as Hodges did a good job of scrambling, got some pressure, stepped up in the pocket, and then just took off with and that's it. what he's dangerous about. He can do that. Back to the line again. Three men to the far side, one to the near side. Zambrano, the lone back. Hodges calls the signals from the shotgun. Snap is there. Comes to the near side. Pitch to Zambrano. Zambrano is caught up. He's missed. He's still on his feet. Down to the 20. Still on his feet. Missing tackles all over the place. And Marcus Ray has to bring him down. At, down at the 14-yard 14, 14 line is what it ends up being. Big run. Rocky Zambrano just looked like a pinball out there. Yes, he did. 25 yards as he, he was in the, the grasp of several Texas City Stingery defensive men and just broke away from him. Never kept his legs, never stopped his legs from turning. Nice 25-yard pickup down to the 14-yard line. This First is, and 10 for is, the herd. This is the way the feisty herd. They've been all year. Is uh, just, man, they never say die. They'll be here all night. In the I formation now, as Hodges goes under center, man in motion goes to the far side. That's Castillo running the option. Pitch out to Zambrano. He's to the 10 and gets tripped up there. Jason Kiner. I tell you what, as Hodges, I don't believe he's ever been hit like that. He gets up limping with a tender right foot as he they're running the option as he let that ball go he was smothered by Tiso Ramirez and a couple of other uh, Texas City linemen I tell you what they took him under brings up second and five the ball sitting inside the 10 at the nine yard line the Stingery nine yard line as the herd are knocking on the door of the Stingery goal line as the team comes to the line of scrimmage Zambrano excuse me from the I formation now they're moving around a little bit two men in the backfield from the shotgun, two men wide, one each side. Give to Zambrano off to the right side. He's going to slip outside, but go nowhere. Big hit, Nathan Hardwick. First one there was Marcus, Marcus Diaz. Diaz. That's right. As he gets up, Marcus Diaz, then Nathan Hardwick helps finish him off. Big hit. Zambrano just kind of bounces to the outside, and Diaz closes in fast. 
And we've got 3.45 remaining here in the first period. Texas City on top, 7-0, as they took the first drive, 70 yards. And now the herd right back. No gain on the play. Third down and five. Ball on the nine-yard line of the Singeries. Hodges again in the shotgun. Takes the snap, looking for somebody to throw it to, looking up the middle. No right got time. all kinds of room as he is going to go in. For the ball's on the ground. No, he made it across Dump the touchdown. line. Yes, sir. Touchdown for the herd as they, Hodges goes in. Hodges does a great job of, of being able to stay in the pocket and it really give credit to the offensive line of the, uh, the herd as they give Hodges a lot of time. Hodges able to just run it in, has a wide open field. Gets hit as he goes into the goal line and loses the ball as he hits the ground, but right. it's six. But he hits it across the plane and that was it. The extra point is swinging gate in effect as it comes, swings back over on the center. Rafael Campos, the kicker. The holder is Eddie Lacy. Lacy to back up the quarterback. Rafael Campos, the right-footed kicker from Brazil, exchange student, puts it up and through the uprights. So with 319 remaining in the first quarter, Texas City 7, Herford 7. We'll be right back. This is your Sting Sports Network. Ronnie Hazard and Dennis Johns back in Texas Stadium as the Hereford Herd just as they cross the goal line and now look up in the lights, Dennis, and the rain is coming down again. Sure is. 319 to play in the first quarter. We're tied at seven apiece. Big scoring drive for the Herd. Five plays, 39 yards. Took two minutes and 51 seconds off the clock. Cody Hodges scores from outside the 10-yard line. Set up by a 41-yard kickoff return by Lopez. Frank Gorham and Jonathan Bell deep. Bell's going to take it at the eight-yard line. He's got to see him across the 20. He follows the blockers, 25, and going to be brought down at the 27-yard line. That's where Texas City will take over first and 10 at their own 27 with 310 to play in the first quarter. Well, I'll tell you what, very impressive drive by the herd as they stay on the ground. You know, they're a passing team. They run every play from the, on that drive, every play from shotgun, but they run the option out of the shotgun. A uh, couple of passes he's, as Hodges faded back, two pass. Nobody there, and he tucks it and runs, and that's effective for the herd. Well, I'll tell you what, he definitely spread the defense out, and you can bet, though, that Tim Finn and the rest of that defensive coaching staff are, are making adjustments as we speak. That's right. First and under center. Fisher in motion to the far side. Pitch to Gorham. Gorham's caught in the backfield. He's going to still get back to the line of scrimmage, fortunately, and it may be giving him a yard, give him a credit for about a yard on the play. As, as Ronnie said, the rain just comes down. Gain of one on that play, making second and nine. It's the way it's been all day here at Texas Stadium. Oh, you know, the, you. one team scores, the other team comes right back and answers. Uh, Stephen Bill Ennis was that way. Uh, Garland, South Grand Prairie was that way. So we're going to see a, <laughs> stay tuned. We're going to have a great game. The team comes to the line of scrimmage. Kevin Johnson and Anthony Lazarin split wide to the near side. Fisher and Gorham, of course, in the backfield. Gorham gets the call up the middle, hit it to the line of scrimmage and moves across the 30 to the 31, and that's going to be it. A gain of two is all that Frank Gorham will get on the second down carry. Gilbert Hernandez on the stop, number 22. Hernandez at the end spot, a 190-pound junior, put a pretty good lick on Frank Gorham on that time. Gorham picks up, did you say two? Picks up two on the carry. The third and seven as the things come to the line of scrimmage. Franchina and Michael Jackson wide to the near side this time. Jackson's the man in the slot. Dotton rolls to the far side. He's got some running room across the 25. He's got the first down, the 40, and runs out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Nice run by Charles Dotton. Well, it really was. Dotton had a good, uh, good opportunity to see the field. Had some good blocks out there laid. Aaron Flanagan, Frank Gorham out there in front, uh, picking up some good blocks, giving him some room, springing him for that first down. First and 10, Stings. Got a minute 51 remaining in the first period, and the score is all tied up at seven. It's a wet Texas Stadium floor tonight. Yes, it is. At least most of the fans are dry, I guess, with that partial roof here. <laughs> Dotton checks the defense. Lazarin goes in motion across to the far side. Dotton takes a snap, pitches to Gorham, coming to the near side, hurdles over the line of scrimmage, and is down across the 41 to the 44-yard line. Gorham, nice job of taking the hurdle. Uh, knew it was closed down on the outside, cuts it up a little bit. And if had he made that 
had he been able to land on his feet, might have done some damage there. Got tripped up by an arm of a her one of the arms of the herdsman. Herdsman. I guess you could say he hurdled the herd on Hurt, that one. Hurdled the herd. Second and eight. Gain of two on that play. Ball fitting at the Stingery's own 43-yard line as they come to the line of scrimmage. Michael Johnson in the slot. Kevin Johnson, I'm sorry, in the slot. The pitch goes to Gorman to the far side, trying to get it outside. Puts the move on. He's across the 45 and stays in bounds as he's brought down at the 47-yard line. I'm sorry, that's the 48-yard line. Brought down by junior linebacker Salinas. Number 25. Gain of five on that play. That'll bring up third and three for Texas City. Just two yards shy of midfield. Three yards shy of the first down as we're at 44 seconds and counting. Left to play here in the first quarter in the wet, soggy, damp, cold <laughs> Texas Stadium. Dotton brings the team to the line of scrimmage. Checks the defense. Takes the snap. Gorham right up the middle. He's across the 45. He's going to be very close. Uh, very not, close. Not going to give him a very good mark if I'm looking at the far official. Gorham fell forward, but I believe the mark is going to be short of the first down. Going to bring up a tough decision, and the Stings most likely will discuss this one. Yeah, they are giving the official an earful. It's not a real good mark. Clock ticking down to eight. I believe we're going to have a quarter before we can get a playoff. First quarter at the end, Texas City 7, Hereford 7. We'll take a break and be right back to you with the second quarter. This is your Stings Sports Network. On Class 4A state championship game, the Texas City Stings 7, the Hereford Herd 7. Texas City now faced with a fourth and one right at midfield, just shy of midfield. And it looks like Dennis, Texas City is going to go for it. They're going to go for it. I'll tell you what. This is a this is a big call. You always second guess these calls. If you make it, you're a hero. If you don't, you're a ghost. Hey, but it's early and, and that's it's right. Midfield, uh, I think it's the, the thing to do. Good play, Dotton with a signal. He's got to make second effort. He's not going to get he it. He will not get it on the quarterback sneak as the herd have smothered Taurus Dotton, actually for a loss. And the herd will take over first and ten at their own 49-yard line. I'm not sure if he got a good handle on the snap or what it was, but he looked like after he got the ball, he just didn't have any oomph. A lot of it could be the turf, just not able to get a good foot under him, under him to be able to, to shove it up into the line. But however, the herd takes over right at midfield. Well, Frank Gorham was the lone man in the backfield, and uh, maybe they were trying to fool everybody and think they were going to pitch it to him. But Dotton takes it, tries to go up the middle of the ball, sitting right on the 50-yard line. First and 10 for the herd. Two men wide each side. One man in the backfield, that's Zambrano from the shotgun, Cody Hodges. Quickly over into the flats, ball bounces, but it's not called. There yeah, it is, yeah, finally it. called. Yes, incomplete pass as the ball bounces off the turf. I didn't know if the official was going to get over there. He let him run a few yards, let him get hit, <laughs> and then he calls it incomplete. So it uh, brings up, stops the clock at 11.52 here in the second quarter. And heard, actually, I think that is the first pass of the night that we've actually seen. Second pass. Well, they threw a little screen pass uh, on their first possession down uh, early. That's right. On their, That's right. On their very first possession. Before their second drive. That's right. Right. So we're back to the action here. Two men to the far side, one to the near side. Hodges from the shotgun calls the signals, fakes the Zambrano, rolls to the near side, looking for his brother downfield. Slade over and out of the reach of Slade Hodges on the near sideline. Actually, incomplete. by the time it got to him, they were two or three yards out of bounds. Jonathan Bell on the coverage right there. Brings up a third and 10 for the herd as Texas City defense looking to shut this thing down right here. Third and 10, the ball still sitting right on the 50 yard line. Two incomplete passes here on this possession. Brings up third and 10. Castillo brings the play in from the sideline for the herd. Gives it to Cody Hodges and the team comes to the line of scrimmage. Hodges looks like he's gonna go under center Two men in the backfield in the eye formation. Hodges under center takes the snap. Rolls line going to be an option. Steps up the throw. Wide open is Hodges. He Drops fumbles. The ball. the ball is stripped by Jonathan Bell, and it is recovered Texas by ball. Texas City. Who's that? Kevin Kelly. Well, Slade Hodges, as, as the, the brother Cody Hodges, comes down the line of scrimmage. Looks like he's going to run the option. He stands up. Slade Hodges is wide open at about the 30-yard line. He takes it in and has the bead, but then the ball gets stripped and Kevin Kelly comes up with the loose ball. Jonathan Bell does the stripping. And I tell you what, uh, that is 
not poetic justice yet, but Slade Hodges is the man in the Weatherford game who uh, on an on an on a interception with clubbed clubbed the ball and got the ball back for the win, actually to be able to kick the field goal to win the game for Weather at the Weatherford game. Texas City first and ten from their own 18-yard line is Dotton barks the signals, Francine in motion, the pitch goes to Gorham. He's going to try and get outside. He's at the 20 and stood up there by number 40, Seth Pitsick. On the first down play, Gorham <laughs> refuses to go to the ground, and the whistle's finally blown, a gain of two on the play. Tell you what, the, the game wasn't a longer game because of Andrew Ramirez, the cornerback, was streaking from his place back on the far corner and causes Frank Gorham to cut himself, cut himself back inside. And as he did, he met big number 40, Seth Pitsick, right there. Pitsick looking for your senior, 190 pounds. You know, the herd, the herd is not really a big team, but they, they're a, a bunch of hard hitters. Well, that's the truth. As the team comes to the line of scrimmage, the thing through, second and eight, Dotton takes the snap. Again, gives the ball to Gorham, cuts it up the middle. Still on his feet, 20, 30, 35, still on his feet, 40, and finally takes three guys to bring him down, and he lunges forward then up to the 43-yard line. What an incredible run I by tell you Frank what, Gorham. The ever-ready bunny, he just kept on going, finally brought down by number 64. That's Michael Barba. If you're at home, you get to watch it again as he's hit, bounces off the tackle, almost tackled again, slips off with another tackle, and finally wrestled to the ground by Baber. 23 yards on the pickup. First and 10 now for Texas City. The ball's on their own 43-yard line. So the big play gets Texas City out from the shadows of their own goal line. Sure does. Dotton under center. Gives to Carl Fisher. Carl Fisher up the middle, picks up six, seven yards down inside herd territory. Actually, gain of eight as he gets down to the 49-yard line right up the middle. That's right. Just like you said, just right over Jamie Spencer uh, in the middle and, and takes it right up the gut for the big game. Eight yards, second and two now. Texas City, as Dennis said, in Hereford territory at the 49-yard line. Seven to seven is our score with exactly 10 minutes and counting to play here in the first half of action. Dotton under center. Fisher and Gorham in the backfield. The give is to Gorham into the left side of the line. He's hit hard, but he gets away and then hit again. It's going to be no gain, but Gorham taking a hard hit and just bouncing off and keep on going. The senior number 56, Vernon Adams, just flat stood Frank Gorham up. A big hit by Adams on that play. Nice looking job by the defense. Well, he did, and then he just slipped right off of that one and ran right into another defender. So no gain on the play. Brings up third down and two. Ball, it's a long two. Ball sits at the right at the 49, almost midfield. Texas City had 92 yards of offense all on the ground the first quarter. Third and two, Dotton takes the snap. Pitches to Jonathan Bell. He's got the first down. Still on his feet across the 45 and brought down at the 44-yard line. Looks like they're going to mark it at the 42. Sure did. I tell you what, Richard Salinas for the herd saves a touchdown there. Got real excited as I saw Jonathan Bell cut it back up the field. And Salinas closes the gap rather quickly. And almost six for Bell. Bell's first carry of the night. In that first quarter, Gorham had nine rushes for 31 yards. Carl Fisher had three rushes for 51 yards. As the team comes to the line of scrimmage, first and 10, the ball on the Herford 41. Francina comes to the near side. Two-man set, Gorham and Fisher. Pitch to Gorham to the far side, running the toss. Gorham. Back to the line of scrimmage. He's hit hard. He's still, still motoring, still oh my motoring. Goodness. Number 40, Seth Petzik picks up Gorham and stands him up at the 42-yard line. Gorham refuses to go down, and they just go lateral to the, well, not, to the field. And as I look at the official, the official must have blown it dead because they're not giving Frank the credit <laughs> as he fell forward. He finally fell forward to about the 38-yard line, but they're moving the ball back to the 40, and I'm sure that's what it is. Forward progress stops there at the 40. But I tell you what, Frank never never quit on that play. No, he didn't. Gain of one for all that effort. <laughs> Second and nine from the 40. To the line. One man to the far side. Man in motion now is Anthony Lazarin. Comes to the near side. Dotton. On the counterplay, back to Fisher. Fisher up the middle. He breaks it. He breaks it. He's going. He's at the 20. Yes, ma'am, at the 10. One man to beat. It's touchdown. Texas City, same play as before. 40 yards for Carl Fisher. Again, on the misdirection. Dennis, he was curtain ready to come between guard and tackle. And all of a sudden, on a dime, cut up field at the center of the field. And all of a sudden, it was Katie bar the door. Texas City goes up 13-7. to seven. As we get to look at it again on the replay, he just flat out runs them. 
I see when he hits the 20, there's just one man to beat, and it's a foot race, and it's Carl Fisher all the way. A little difference tomorrow night will be shown at 5 o'clock rather than the normal 1 o'clock. Make sure that you uh, set your VCR or you, you're in front of the TV. Brandon Tolan set the hole in the extra point attempt by Bobby Garza. The snap is good. Kick is up. Nice, strong kick. And with eight minutes exactly to play here in the first half, Texas City 14, Hereford 7. We'll be back in just a minute. We're back at Texas Stadium with exactly eight minutes to play here in the first half. As the team so far just trading scores, then it's the Texas First Bank scoring deposit for Texas City. Seven plays. They went 82 yards. Took three minutes and 37 seconds off the clock. Kept off by the 40-yard run by Carl Fisher. Right. Again, as we saw last week, that that uh, possession was given over by a turnover. Or if you recall, at the 18-yard line, Jonathan Bell stripping the ball out of Slade Hodges' hands. And Texas City takes advantage. Well, that's exactly right. I tell you what, you know, Herford had the ball deep in Texas City territory as they were... They had picked up the first down inside the 20. Uh, With a Jonathan, nice play. Yeah, very nice play. And Jonathan Bell strips the ball inside the 20 from Slade Hodges. Texas City recovers. And Bobby Garza now kicks off. The short high kick, fair catch called for at the 25-yard line by number four. That's Cody Marsh. And that's where the herd will take over first and 10 at their own 25. Boy, again, <clears throat> what a matchup back and forth all day long here with uh, Stephenville. Stephenville Ennis, the first game. Uh, Stephenville came out the victor in that game. Second game matched up Garland and South Grand Prairie. And Garland came the victor in that game. And I tell you what, it has just been back and forth all day long, just like right here at this 4A Division I Texas Bowl. Well, as the herd come back to the line of scrimmage, the rain has stopped again here. Cody Hodges in the shotgun, takes the snap. Big rush by the Stings, but the screenplay set up nicely. Oh, the ball's on the ground as number four, Cody Marsh, had the ball as he tries to make a move on I, Kevin Kelly. I'm he trying just, dropped, to, he the just dropped the ball. I'm trying to figure out if he tried to change hands or what. Well, but, uh, it was a nice move, but he, he moved. His cut was too much for himself, I guess. Dwight it's Simpson good. was getting up off of, a, off of a, a block, and as he did, Marsh just looked at him and dropped the ball. I guess he just scared scared him to death. Well, the herd set up the screenplay nicely as they <laughs> sure let the did. Texas City defense come in. Three guys rush Cody Hodges big and time. And Hodges took a hit. Gain of one on the play, second and nine from the 26. Hodges has two men wide to choose from, one man in the backfield. He's from the shotgun. Got a lot of time. He's going to scramble out of the pocket, stays back in, hits his brother, number 17, Slade Hodges, two yards past the first down. It's a first down herd. A lot of nice-looking patience by Hodges that time as he waits for, for his brother Slade Hodges to get open across the middle, and he finds him just a yard or two in front of the first down marker. 17 yards on the pass play from Hodges to Hodges. First down for the herd. Ball sitting at their own 37-yard line as they come to the line of scrimmage. Send two men wide to both sides. One man in the backfield. Hodges goes to the far side, being chased by Daly. He's going to be caught. And it looks like the ball might have been on the ground. But no, I believe Hodges held on to it. James Fitch and Jason Daly both sandwich him as, uh, as he gets back. He's going to have a very generous mark as they get let him get back to the line of scrimmage. Well, James Fitch did a great job from the defensive end position as he just flat refused to let that play go outside. Well, they and do. And they do run shovel pass some. So, uh, not sure what which uh, position it was, but the shovel pass was covered as well. I just had nowhere to go with it. Tries to scramble and goes nowhere. Second and ten. Hodges back in the shotgun has one man wide each side, two men in the backfield. Low snap. He picks it up. Has some time. Big rush. Tiso Ramirez. Tiso Ramirez throws him down. Get a sack. Tiso Ramirez, the lead sack leader for the Stings, and so Tiso picks up. I believe that's number seven and a half. Seven and a half sacks on the season. And basically, for a, for a defensive player, that's like a touchdown, baby. I, that's, a, that's a sweet thing. Ramirez sacks the quarterback back at the 27-yard line. So a big loss, of, a loss of nine on that play. That's exactly what we're going to need from the, from the uh, Stings 
is putting pressure on Hodges, not giving him all day to throw that ball back oh, that's here. That's right. Nice job by Tiso Ramirez. As the herd come to the line of scrimmage, three men wide to the near side, two to the far side, third and 20. Ball on their own 28-yard line. Low stab, but Hodges takes it up, looking for a receiver, flushed out of the pocket. Nowhere to go, but down. Oh, and my goodness. And he is back at the 22-yard line. Marcus Ray, Tiso Ramirez, and Jason Daly That's all right. just sandwich him in between. Great job by the defensive backs of Texas City. Hodges had all kinds of time for a while, but you can only hate so much time. You might actually call that a coverage sack as well, there's nobody to go to. Hodges looks all over, and his outlet man was not even available either. Jason Usually Daly. able to slip it out to the uh, out in the flat, and he wasn't there either. Yeah, Daly turns him inside. Six yards on that loss will bring up fourth and 26, the ball at their own 22, as Hodges will kick, will punt the ball now, standing at his own 10-yard line. Chanchina standing back inside the 40. Block, block, but picked up picked by, up by uh, Mitchell Goodnight. Goodnight. Mitchell Goodnight, I'm sorry. He's going to be touchdown. for the no, touchdown. They're going to mark him down. Yes, no, yes. he's in there, baby. They called it touchdown as Chad Clay yes. gets in there to block the, fit, the uh, excuse me, that's a punt. That's a punt. <laughs> Caught in the air by Mitchell Goodnight and Stings have another score. We've got a Sting down. I'm not sure what number it is. For the ball, as Dennis said, that's Chad Clay that's down. Clay blocks the punt, comes in from the near side, blocks the punt. The ball goes in the air about five yards or so, and Mitchell Goodnight, number 85 for the Stings, the junior tight end and linebacker is right there, picks it up at the 15-yard line, and goes in for the touchdown. That puts the score at 20-7, to Texas City with the extra point to come. But... We've got an injury timeout on the field as it looks like Clay is now getting up. Oh, that's a good sign. Yes, he stayed there for a long time. And he's uh, walking off under his own power. Gets a big hug from E.J. Whitley. And when I say a hug from E.J. Whitley, that's a, big hug. that's a huge hug. <laughs> Clay off under his own power as he gets the block. The uh, special Herd, team. Heard has fallen victim to the uh, blocked punt once before in the playoffs. And here it happens again. Stings on top, 20 to 7 with the extra point to follow. Tolden with the hold, Daly with the snap, and Garza to attempt the extra point. We've got 420 remaining here in the first half. Kick is up, and it is good. Texas City takes advantage, and they go on top 21 to seven over the Hereford Herd. We'll be right back to you. This is your Stings Sports Network. comes in from the near side as Cody Hodges has set the punt. Chad Clay comes in from the near side and blocks the punt in the air. It goes right into the hands of Mitchell Goodnight, and he takes it in for the score. It looked like Clay, well, Clay was injured on the play. Not sure exactly what happened, but he got off under his own power, and he's okay. And Texas City now with the two-touchdown lead as Bobby Garza puts his foot into the ball to kick off a high short kick taken at the 28-yard line by the herd. Got a Got some blockers in front of him, still on his feet, the 45, 50, Jason Daly, and Bobby Garza brings him down at the Stingery 35-yard line. Tell you what, that's that's twice now that they have done a great job on kickoff returns. Well, I tell you what, you know, the difference tonight is that the front line of the Hereford Herd are, are keeping the Stings from getting to the coverage. 
The pooch kick usually is a very effective kick but it's because the coverage is able to get there. The coverage is not getting there tonight. And uh, you're going to give credit to the front line of the herd because they're just not able to get through. 37 yards on the return gives Herford great field position. First and 10 at the Stingery 34-yard line. As Cody Hodges, the lone man in the backfield, they send three men wide to the near side, two men to the far side. Need some pressure here from the defense. Hodges, a quick out to the flat, and it's going to be to Zambrano. Zambrano is hit immediately by, that's I believe that's Warren, Warren Wilson. Wilson, comes up from the corner. Yes, Warren Wilson with the stop after a gain of only two on the play. That'll make it second and eight. That's a pretty punishing re reception for Zambrano because Warren Wilson just basically goes right at his ankles, takes his feet out from under him and puts him down. So second and seven, second and eight, I believe. Ball's on the 32-yard line as the herd ends up with some excellent field position. Three men to the near side, two to the far side. Hodges from the shotgun. Hodges very quickly over to the near side, and that's to Lopez, number eight. He cuts it up. He's going to be caught at the 30, excuse me, 25-yard line. It's going to be about a yard short of the first down, but they'll have it third and short as Marcus Diaz, the first stingery there on the stop as the ball is placed right on the 25-yard line of the stingery. So now the herd, after one their lone touchdown drive so far of the half, is all on the ground. Now they go to the air as they show some of their diverse weapons. Texas City a little slow getting the defense set up, but they're ready now as the herd comes to the line of scrimmage. Hodges under center on this one in the eye formation. Hodges takes the snap, pitches to number five. That's Zambrano, and he's going to have the first down. He stood up just as he gets past the marker at the 22-yard line, and the herd will have the first down. Little change in for the Stings as Roy Swan is now replacing, of course, Marcel Moses is out at that end spot. Marce Roy Swan, the big number 71, is now anchoring that front line. Will the herd pick up a first down as the rain starts to come down again. First and 10 inside the 30 for the herd. First and 10 at their own, at, I'm sorry, at the Singery 23. Again, again in the I formation, Hodges comes back. He's going to keep it rolling to the near side, looking for somebody to throw it to. Roy Swan chasing him, catches up with him, won't let go. Tiso Ramirez helps him, and they're throwing for a yard, maybe two-yard loss on the play. Well, if you're a lineman, that's what you want. You get credit for that tackle for loss. That's right. Don't let him back to the line of scrimmage. Roy Swan doing a nice job of pursuit. Swan just beats his man. Hodges tries to outrun him, but then he looks up, and there's Tiso Ramirez. And Swan and Ramirez on the sack. Actually, no gain on the play. Second and 10 now from the 23 as the herd come to the line of scrimmage. They'll stay in the eye formation as Hodges goes under center, wide outs to either side. Hodges is going to throw. Screen pass set up at the 20. On his feet still, 10. Down to the five-yard line. Kevin Kelly finally brings him down, but not before Zambrano picks up the first down inside the five-yard line. A nice presence of mind by Zambrano to be able to turn the ball back upfield and pick up the much-needed additional yardage. We've got a minute 24 remaining here in the half, and the herd now with their uh, furthest penetration so far of the night after the, uh, other than their score as the ball sits inside the five-yard line at the four. Clock stops while the chains move, but it's going again now, minute 15. First and goal. Hodges now steps back into the shotgun. Three men on the near side, one on the far side. Zambrano is alone back. There's the snap. Hodges going to keep, go up the middle, and he's going to be caught down to the two, maybe the one-yard line. Hodges keeping the whole way as he scampers back to pass and then takes it up, cuts it upfield. Jason and Daly on the stop, and timeout's going to be called by Herford. We're going to take a break with him with 53 seconds to play in the first half. Texas City 21, Herford 7. This is your Sting Sports Network. At DeMont Truck, Chevy Old Toyota, on the Gulf Freeway at Texas City, we have got it all. If you're looking for a car, we've got cars. If you're looking for a truck, we've got trucks. If you're looking for an SUV, we've got SUVs. If you're looking for a van, we've got vans. We've even got RVs, and we've got plenty of them. We've got a well-stocked parts department, a top-notch service department, and a first-class body shop. That's DeMont Truck, Chevy City. 
2800.45 North, exit 15 in Texas City. 1963 Texas City High School graduate Bill Etheridge, broker of Etheridge Real Estate, is proud of the Texas City State that is Etheridge Real Estate All-Star. Bill is a hometown boy and a real estate broker for 28 years. Bill and his family have been part of the mainland business community since 1949. As one of the largest independent real estate firms in the area with 11 agents, he takes pride in the professionalism and service provided by his staff in serving the real estate needs of our area. As both teams come back onto the field, let's set it up for you. 53 seconds to play in the first half. Texas City's on top here in the Division I state championship game over the Herford Whitefaces, 21-7. But Herford with a second and goal at the one-yard line. Hodges from the shotgun. Three men to the near side. Has Zambrano in the backfield with him. Everything's all spread out. Hodges looks to call his own number. He's going to slip in for the score. It's um, six more points on the board for the herd. And as they score, the big Herford on the side just snorts smoke. Blows smoke out his nostrils. Blowing smoke. It? He's happy on that one. 21 to 13 with the extra point to come. With less than a minute. Dennis, you made a good point uh, during the break. This is kind of what Herford tends to do, don't they? Score right with less than a minute left in the first half. Almost every game that they've played in, they have come back to keep the momentum uh, on their side or, or at least not let it get away. Campo set to attempt the extra point. And then it said the exchange shooter from Sao Paulo, Brazil. The extra point is up. Looks good from here, and it is with 50 seconds to play. Texas City 21, Herford 14. We're going to be back in just a minute. This is your Steam Sports Network. Driver funeral home for Mark, Dickinson, and Webster. Should the time come you need an attorney, it's important that you choose an attorney qualified, knowledgeable, and certified. The law firm of Martin and Garza can provide you that and more. With the stability of over 50 years, Martin and Garza can represent your complete legal needs, including personal injury claims, civil litigation, family law matters, criminal law, as well as wills and probate. Martin and Garza, Attorneys at Law, Texas City. Ronnie Hazard and Dennis Johns back with you on the Sting Sports Network. 50 seconds to set left to play here in the first half. The Hereford Herd have just scored to make it 21 to 14. And Dennis, we didn't expect any less, but we've got a ball game on our hands. Well, we sure do. I tell you, you know, the Hereford fans, as we talked before the game, Take it easy on us. Take it easy on us. That kind of uh, stuff. Yeah. And I tell you, it's not. It's not here tonight. It is. Uh, it is. It's a battle on the field. Texas City with the good hands. People on the front line on this kickoff team is Ruben Arnellis, Brandon Tolden, Anthony Lazarin, Marcus Diaz, and Anthony Tranchina make up the front line as the herd are set to kick off. That's number 86, Mike Badola, doing the kickoff chores. He puts a foot into it, hits the ground, and Frank Gorham going to just fall on an inside the 20 at the 19 yard line. Nice looking kick as it just squibs and dribbles all down right inside the 20 yard line. Found all the holes that it could sure to did. get through Stingeries and of course Texas City not wanting to take a chance of mishandling it. Let it roll and then Frank Gorham doesn't want to take a chance of trying to pick it up and mishandle either. Wisely just falls Wisely. on the ball. Exactly. He's got to had the uh, defense bearing down on him. Very wise choice. So Texas City with 50 seconds to play in the first half has the ball first and 10, just inside their own 20-yard line. Anthony Tranchina comes wide to the near side. Michael Jackson in the slot. Fisher and Gorham. I'm sorry, that's Chad Clay in the backfield. Clay's going to get the call. Gorham's the got 20. the call. Um, that is Gorham. I'll get it right in a minute. Still Gorham, whoa, just tripped up oh. at the 40-yard line by number 20. Basically, we'd call that a touchdown-saving tackle by Nathan Parson, a senior herd. And I tell you what, Frank was on the roll. He picked up 21 as he falls forward to the 41-yard line. Well, now that I just totally confused you on who was even running the ball, <laughs> I looked up and I thought I saw a 20. That's these 43-year-old eyes, I think. <laughs> but um, Nine seconds went off the clock. Clock stops to move the chains. Things now in uh, some good position. 
They're in their own territory. Dotton calls the signals. Two men to the near side. Gives to Gorham again. Gorham into the interior of the line. Going to go nowhere. Back to the line of scrimmage. And the clock will continue to tick. And they call a timeout now. Texas City gets the timeout with 24 seconds left. We're going to take a break and be back with the rest of the first half. Texas City 21, Hartford 14. We'll be back in just a minute. It's a good thing my boys sell pickup trucks and vans at Hammond Auto Parts in Texas City. But today, Toby, Tommy, and Jerry have one of the largest selections of trucks and vans in this part of the country. And it's the best prices, too. So go on down to Hammond Auto Parts and see my boys. I'm sure you'll find the right truck to fit all your hauling needs, even if it's just for groceries for three growing boys like mine. Where are the cookies, Mom? Mom, where's my cake? And where's my ice cream? Gibby's Photography at 1218 14th Street North, Texas City's only comprehensive photographic studio, puts memories to print, offering a wide array of photographic services including individual and family portraits, weddings, special events, and even passports. For personal, friendly, and professional attention, Gibby's Photography. Texas City, second and nine, the ball on their own, 42, with 24 seconds to play. Dotton takes the handoff. He's being chased out of the pocket. Cuts the tries to, ball's on the ground, and it looks like, not sure who got it, but I believe Texas, Texas City, City got it back. did recover. Can't see who it was that came up with the ball. The clock will continue to run. That's going to be the end of our half, as we're going to just probably let that puppy tick down. That well, was a close <laughs> yes, call. Yes, it was. As Dotton tried to roll the far side, he was being chased by a couple of white jerseys. And as he gets hit, the ball goes to the ground. And that's going to be the end of the first half. Texas City 21, Herford 14. Don't go away, folks. We've got a great halftime. And we'll be back with second half action in just a minute. This is your Sting Sports Network. Hi, I'm Kimber McClellan. I'm the drum major. Hi, I'm Lindsay Langford, and I'm treasurer. I'm Karen Owens, and I am secretary. I'm Jennifer Peterson, and I'm the vice president. I'm Jennifer Youngblood, and I'm chaplain. I'm Lindsay Sumney, and I'm the trumpet section leader. I'm Marta Robles, I'm color guard, first lieutenant captain. Hi, I'm Crystal, and I'm a head captain, color guard. I'm Tyke Swaby, I'm head drum major, and I'd like to say, I love you, band. I'm Melissa Rowlett. I'm the sophomore representative. Go see. My name's Stephen Myers, and I'm the jump captain. Hello, I'm Brett Pardle. Go see. I'm Chris Mendiola. I'm a junior, and I'm the trombone section leader. Hi, I'm Al Smithy. I'm a senior, and I'm clarinet section leader. My name's Charles Williams. I'm a sophomore, and I'm trombone section leader. Hi, I'm Ray Sear, and I'm a senior, and I'm baritone section leader. I'm Ashley Lowe, well, I'm a senior, I'm color guard lieutenant captain. Being the best takes persistence, patience, and great perseverance. The young people of Texas City High School exemplify those attributes, both on the field of play and most especially in the classroom. Texas First Bank, with its 12 locations in Galveston County, are always there for our area young people and their families with generous loan assistance for business development, home improvement, automobile, our school and student loan needs. Helping build the young lives of Galveston County one bright future at a time, we are Texas First Bank, equal housing lenders and members of the FDIC. you need an attorney, it's important that you choose an attorney qualified, knowledgeable, and certified. The law firm of Martin and Garza can provide you that and more. 
With the stability of over 50 years, Martin and Garza can represent your complete legal needs, including personal injury claims, civil litigation, family law matters, criminal law, as well as wills and probate. Martin and Garza, Attorneys at Law, Texas City.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Texas Stadium in Irving. A great halftime performance by both the Hereford Band and the Texas City Band, where both teams are out in the end zone getting uh, the muscles loosened up again. What a great first half we've had. If you've just joined us, Texas City on top, 21-14 to 14 over the Hereford Herd here in the Division I Class 4A state championship game. It's been everything we thought it would be and more. Ronnie Hazard along with Dennis Johns. Dennis, you got some first-half stats for I us. I tell you, sure do. Texas City with a total of 196 yards all on the ground. They have gained seven first downs and no turnovers. They've uh, kept possession of the ball. That's been pretty even. They've kept the ball 11 minutes and 20 seconds as far as the... Um, the Hereford Herd, they only have 79 yards of offense. They had one possession. I think it was their fourth possession where they actually lost about 18 or 20 yards on the possession. As Texas City had a couple of quarterback sacks. As the Herd come back on the field, they've rushed for 30 yards. 
they passed for 49. They have four first downs. And the big numbers for them, actually two of Texas City scores coming on turnovers. Number one, they turn the ball over inside the Texas City 20-yard line. Texas City recovers the fumble, moved the ball 82 yards, I believe it was, for the score. And then a little bit later, Chad Clay comes in, blocks the punt. R Mitchell Goodnight picks it up and runs it in for another score. And then their third score on a Carl Fisher touchdown run. And Carl Fisher actually has two yards rush or two touchdown rushing. As a matter of fact, uh, individual stats, Gorham has 15 rushes for 78 yards. He's had uh, his two longest runs were 21 and 23 yards. Carl Fisher has five rushes for 99 yards, has a 40-yard touchdown run and a 31-yard touchdown run. Fisher averaging 19.8 yards per carry in the first half. That's right. You know, really, in looking at the uh, score being 21 to 14, Texas City is really fortunate to have that score. We talked about how important special teams is, are. Uh, Herford has had some excellent field positions set up by kickoff returns. Uh, one of their drives went uh, 39 yards. The other drive goes 34 yards. So they've had to go very short yardage to, to gain their two touchdowns. And again, those, those two touchdowns were set up by some excellent field position by on, on a kickoff return. Well, that's exactly right. You know, we, we worried coming in of Cody Hodges and his throwing. And uh, as he, we talked about, he completed 67% of his passes in the regular season, 75% in the playoffs. And here in this game, st staying right along those lines, six for nine for 49 yards. That's 66% of his passes. Of course, they're all a little short passes out to the flats, but hey, it's a wide open offense and you get that many guys spread out, throw it in the flats and they're going to have room to run. Right. I'll tell you one thing I'm impressed with, Texas City basically for the, I believe the first time in the playoffs that I recall, took the first drive, drove the length of the field, seven plays, 70 yards uh, for a touchdown. I think pretty well every every game that they've started off with, they've really kind of sputtered on offense on the first drive. This this Tonight they came out focused and really, really went off uh, and, and to make an, an impressive first, uh, first possession. Well, that's a very good point. Rusty's always talking about how the typical slow Texas City offense gets started, but I tell you what, they came out and made a statement right off the bat, and Herford knew they were in for a ball game, but then Herford didn't slack off any, and they came back and said, hey, guys, we can play football, too. That's right. Big thanks to Brian uh, Martin, our statistician, for bringing us the halftime stats. Kickoff is up. John Bell is under it at the 11-yard line, takes it to the middle of the field, looks for his blockers, catches the seam back out to the outside. He's at the 30. He's still on his feet at the 31. Still, still going. Breaks away. He's at the 40 and down and out of bounds at the 42-and-a-half-yard line. What a run by Jonathan Bell as he was almost stopped at about the 30, and he ends up taking it down to the 43, a 31-yard return on the kickoff Well, for Jonathan Bell. Field position has been set up by the herd on their two possessions, and here Texas City takes advantage. Jonathan Bell, like Ronnie said, into the middle of the field and cuts it back out to the outside. First and 10 for the Stings from their own 43-yard line. As Fisher and Gorham stay in the backfield, Anthony Trancina wide to the far side. Dotton gives the ball to Fisher up the middle. Nothing doing there, and Fisher's going to go down. A uh, loss on the play as he stops first man there for the herd, number 25, Richard Salinas. That's right. Nobody fooled on that play. Basically just a simple dive play up the middle to Carl Fisher. And, and nowhere actually going to give him a loss of one, actually loss of two on the play. Ball sits now just just outside the 40-yard line. We're calling it 41. As Dotton brings the team to the line of scrimmage, Lazarin out wide to the far side on the second 12 play. Gives it to Gorham. Is tripped up just as he goes across the line of scrimmage and falls down at the 43. Going to be back to the original line of scrimmage. Very fortunately tripped up again. Gorham just inches away from, from busting a big one there as uh, I believe that was number 64, Michael Barba. 210 pound junior that's the scary thing about this Herford team uh, is that man I look over here and they're laden with juniors many juniors out there on the defensive squad as we speak third and ten for the Stings as they come to the line of scrimmage Michael Jackson wide to the near side Tranchina comes in motion to the near side Dotton takes the snap on the option going to keep it pitches to Gorm it's behind him Gorm has to stop and come to it and he's looking for some room got the corner all the way to the near side big block 50 yard line and he's going to be short of the mark, I, I believe, believe he very is. close. Boy, what a nice job by Gorham. He had to come back to the ball and ends up being just a yard shy. 
But I tell you what, he did that all on his own. He sure did. I, I, the cutback on his own, as the uh, the lineman noticed he was coming back, they laid some blocks for him to get him around. We're going to have a measurement. It's going to be an official timeout for the measurement, so we could uh, be very close. Carl Fisher comes back. You didn't look at the replay. Carl Fisher comes back, makes a block. Aaron Flanagan come back, comes back with a block. And a nine-yard run, going to be very, very close to the first down. We've got a 10, 10 minutes and one second remaining here in the third quarter. We're just now into the second half. As the chains Texas come. City on top, 21 to 14. Chains are coming all the way across the field. The officials are getting set to look at it. Looks like it's going to be short. It is going to be a half a yard short. There you see, nice job by the cameraman, Richard Presley, on that one, as there are just a shy. If you recall, Texas City went for one in the first half and were, were stood up and stopped by the herd defense. At this point in the game, Coach Dowling and his staff chooses to punt this one away. So Bobby Garza and the punt team come on, and number 17, Slade Hodges, back to receive this punt. He'll be standing right at his own 10-yard line. I think that's a good call. You know, there's more momentum sure. in stopping a defense right here. That could really swing the momentum to the, uh, to the herd at this point. Just punt it away and make their offense go to work is a good call. Garza gets everyone set. Back about the 38-yard line to receive the snap from Jason Daly. The snap is good. Garza spiral going to be taken by Hodges at the 18. He's got some running room and got a flag on the play. Uh, got a block in the black, uh, block in the back over here. <laughs> block in the black, block in the black jersey in the back <laughs> at about the 20-yard line as Hodges brings the ball up to the 27-yard line, but. We'll hold it here and see what the field. I tell you what, that's one interesting thing. We have seen very, very few, few yellow flags. Very, very good, well played game so far tonight. 30 yard yeah. punt by Barbie Garza. And we've got an illegal block is the right. call. Against the herd, so that'll back it up inside the 20 for the herd on their first offensive possession as they'll get ready to start. They'll be deep in their own territory, right. actually at their own 10 yard line. Well, they, they were going to look good. Ball was going to be out on about the 30-yard line, I believe, and now they're going to be ending up starting from the 10. As uh, that was a good call for the Stings. Heard out to the line. Hodges steps up under center, has one man wide to each side, two men in his backfield. Man in motion is number one. That's George Castillo. The snap, fake, back to pass, looking for a receiver, has one across the middle. That's Slade Hodges. Number 17, and it's 10 yards down the field, and I believe it's going to be very close to the first down. It, yes, it is. It first is a first down. Marcus Diaz right there, but not before the pass and catch for the first down. They give him 11 yards on that one as the rain starts to come down again. It had pretty much stopped during the halftime. During halftime, sure did. And yeah. just like it's on cue, the teams are back on the field, and the rain comes down. First and 10 for the herd at their own 21-yard line. Hodges under center. Team in the I formation, give it to the first man through. That's, That's number 21, Kyle Artho. Crawls down forward, picks up about five yards, down across the 25-yard line to the 26. Artho has been a go-to guy as well, has uh, carried quite a bit of the weight for this Hereford team this year. Artho has 310 yards and a touchdown. Second and five as the herd come to the line of scrimmage, again in the I formation. Hodges under center pitches to the back. Zambrano, He's got Paul he, he breaks the room. It. Kevin Kelly finally brings him down at the 50-yard line, but not before a huge gain of 24 yards for Zambrano and the herd from Hereford. Tell you what, Zambrano just took advantage of a huge hole by, created by his offensive line on the right side, and he just busted up the up the gut down inside Texas City territory. Officially 25 yards on the carry. The ball sitting at the Stingery 49-yard line as the rain starts to come down harder here at Texas Stadium in Irving. Still in the eye formation. And got we've got moving on the herd side. It's going to go back. Missed the snap then. Uh, missed the snap count and did the tight end. And they'll move it back five yards on the illegal motion. That'll make it first and 15. The ball moves back to the 45-yard line, just outside the 45-yard line. 
8-16 to play in the third quarter. Texas City holding on to the 21-14 lead. Lots of time left here in this ball game as they've just been trading scores. Texas City scoring two of their three touchdowns on turnovers. I just, to the line, from the shotgun, two men in the backfield with him, a man wide each side. Shovel pass to Zambrano, and he cuts it up the middle. Oh, Hit hard oh. by, let me give me that number, that Mack truck. Marcus Diaz was the Mack truck that stuck his head in Zambrano. How now Brown Cow stuck him. Looked like he was going to have a big gainer. But ends up picking only two, picking up only two, and that's what they say about Zambrano. He can take a hit and just pop right back up. Kind of actually kind of fires the herd up. Actually, it was a gain of seven because they right. had the five-yard penalty. That's in right. it, so it makes it second and seven from the 47. The Stinger East 47 in the shotgun. Hodges on the option, pitches out to the outside to number 21, and he gets down to the 45-yard line. That's Kyle Artho on the carry. Dwight Simpson and Kevin Kelly on the stop for the Stings. As they push him out of bounds, pick up a possibly two, pick up a three on the carry. Third down and six. Ball sits on the 45-yard line as the rain continues to fall in the big hole. <laughs> I thought the hole was smaller, but it actually covers the whole field. It's able to rain on the whole, whole field. Fans on both sides on their feet. Third and six. The ball's at the Singery 45 as Hodges trying the hands off on the town of the center. Big rush. He's going to keep it. He's going to have the first down. And we got, got a hold call. That's yes, right. Marcus Diaz couldn't get to him because the, 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 the receiver out there was holding him. And they're gonna, that one's going to come back. He picked up enough for the first down. Actually went out of bounds at the 35-yard line. But it'll come back. Slade Hodge is out there pleading his case. Yes, he is. But I don't think he's going to win that one. So it'll be third down again. They'll repeat third down as the officials on the far side discussing just what went on, figuring out where they need to move the ball to. That was a third and six from Texas City's own 45. Holding is the call. Repeat third down. The hold was downfield. So the ball actually will be ending end up on the same line of scrimmage that's right as before the play started the penalty from i guess where it happened obviously and that Ten makes yards. it third and six from the 45 so third and six again hodges comes under center in the eye formation are the herd man in motion comes to the near side hodges with a long snap count thanks it rolls to the near side dwight simpson with the pressure in and, hodges the in and out of his hands as he goes to his knees and the herd will big, face fourth down. See what, Dennis, that was a big break for Texas City because Slade Hodges did a great job of coming back to the ball. He and, sure did. He was the man there. The ball was thrown where it was the only place it could be, and Hodges went to his knees but just couldn't hide it. He was in that part of the field that we talked about earlier. Being so it's, damp. It's so, that's right. As he went to his knees, water splashes up and everywhere. Damp is not even a good word to no. use. So Texas City holds. It'll be fourth and six. And Anthony Tranchina will be standing back at his own 10-yard line to receive the punt. Eddie Lacy now into punt. Usually it's Hodges. Lacy number two for the herd. Back at his 38-yard line. Gets away a nice high kick. Tranchina underneath will field it at the 10. He's hit at the 10. Stays on his feet up to about the 12-yard line. And that's where Texas City will take over. First and 10 from their own 12-yard line was 6.56 to play in the third quarter. I tell you what, Ronnie, this is not actually a too safe of a place to be. A seven-point lead on this Hereford team is not a cushion at no, all. Not by any stretch of the imagination. 45 yards on the punt by Lacey. And uh, in case you care, the rain has stopped again. Actually, it's just a light drizzle now. Jamie Spencer breaks the huddle first. Tranchini comes to the near side. Dotton under center. Gorham and Fisher in the backfield. The give to Gorham. Gorham busts up the middle. He's still on his feet. Busts again. Breaks another tackle. Down to the 24-yard line Boy, Frank, with about a 10, 11-yard carry. Frank Gorham goes over the left side between the guard and tackle and just busts it up for the first down. He moves the chains on the 13-yard carry for Frank Gorham. And that's just, again, a dive play right into the middle of the line and to the left side of the that uh, deep offensive line. For Texas City, Frank just busted up for 13. 
team comes back out. Anthony Lazarin goes to the far side. To the near side comes number 19, Michael Jackson. Gorman Fisher again in the backfield. The give to Fisher. He's up the middle. He breaks one tackle. Still caught by the foot. Going to wiggle around and pick up about four yards down to the 29-yard line. Nice job by Fisher as he goes up the middle. Four, five, second and five from the Sting's own 30-yard line. Got some folks that we want to recognize. A couple of weeks ago, we said hello to Grandma Katuri Tonight, we want to say just special shouts to Nick Katuri That's Jonathan's grandfather. He's just had a bypass surgery. We just hope that he recovers and heals well and, and gets back to the action. Hasn't missed a game this year. This is his first game to miss. We want to wish him well tonight. Second and six from the 29-yard line. Pitch to Gorham. He gets outside. He's at the 30. It's a foot race. 40. One man to beat. Got 50. a block downfield by Anthony Tranchina. 30, it's going to be 20, 15, 10, 5. Oh, Frank Gorham gets caught at the two-yard line. Just barely caught by Gilbert Hernandez. We're going to have the replay again. You want to get home and watch this thing at 5 o'clock tomorrow afternoon on Sunday. Frank Gorham busts loose for 68 yards, and that's what you want to see if you're a Sting fan is get to that corner. Fisher goes in motion, lays the first block. Frank just beats the man to the outside. Anthony Tranchina's out in front with the one block, and... Frank goes past him, and finally from behind is caught number 22. As you didn't said, Gilbert Hernandez makes the touchdown saving tackle. Hernandez took a good angle. First and goal from the one for the Stings. They're in the full house backfield. Jonathan Bell joins Fisher and Gorham. Dotton falls over, but Bell, Bell takes it dives in, in for the touchdown. Touchdown, PC. I tell you what, Gorham, oh, I'm sorry, Charles Dotton, as he took the snap, was losing his footing as he fell back, but got it into the arms of Jonathan Bell. And Bell goes in, just dives over from about he three yards He leaves at the three-yard line That's and right. just goes horizontal. So Texas City, with the score, makes it 27-14 to 14 with the extra point to come. Brandon Tobin in to hold for the Bobby Garza extra point attempt with 5-11 to play here in the third quarter. Sting's looking to double the score and go to a 14-point lead. On this extra point, Tobin drives his hands off, throws the towel aside. As we await the snap a little high, but Tolan does a good job of getting it down. Big rush, and the extra point is no good. Wide to the left on the extra point attempt. But Texas City was 5-11 to play here in the third quarter. Takes the 27-14 lead. We'll be back in just a minute. This is your Sting Sports Network. like this, or this, or maybe this. Well, this is where it all starts almost every morning in Texas City. Able Roofing Company's owner, Ted Schumack, can assist you in the removal of your old roof and the installation of a new one. Able Roofing Company uses only the best materials and quality workmanship. Able Roofing Company, Texas City. Ronnie Hazard and Dennis Johns. Back at Texas Stadium, the Texas First Bank scoring deposit for Texas City. Four plays, 88 yards, one minute and 56 seconds off the clock. The highlight of that, the big 68-yard run by Frank Gorham, kept off by the John Bell one-yard dive for the touchdown. 27-14 to 14 is where we stand with 5-11 to play in the third quarter. Bobby Garza set to kick off, puts the foot into this one, and it's going to go and take him. Oh, my goodness. He touches it, and it goes out of, oh, he puts oh, the flag Oh, he dropped the flag. I was going to say, it looks like he caught it at about the three-yard line and yes, stepped out of bounds. It sure did, and the coaches are going to ask about that one, but tough break as it was caught out of bounds, I guess. That's what they're going to have to re-kick this one. I believe that's what we're going to do. Frank Gore. No, it looks like the offensive unit for the hot, for the uh, herds on the field. That's right. On the penalty, they'll spot the ball at the 30-yard line, and that's where the herd will take over. On that big run, Dennis, of 60-plus yards for Frank, that puts him at 
18 carries for 162 yards thus far on the night. He didn't like the idea of Carl Fisher having more yards than him at <laughs> halftime, maybe. Took a fist so, to that, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> so the rain comes down again as the white jerseys of the Hereford White Faces come back on the field. They're down 27 to 14. If I was Hereford, I might take this a little personal. Seems like the rain starts yeah. when they get the ball back. Every time. If I'm a Sting fan, I sure don't mind that. Let it rain. In the shotgun goes Cody Hodges. Two men in the backfield standing on either side of Hodges awaiting the snap. Men wide out, one needs to each side. Hodges takes the ball, looking for some running room, going laterally up the field. Thinks about pitching to the back man, but nothing doing. As Kevin Kelly shuts that down, comes from the back side. Nick Felder from one side and Nathan Hardwick in there as well. And Hodges is known to pitch from, from way on down the field. He'll pitch it from just about anywhere. Well, that's and right. He did think about it on that one, but uh, chose to keep it as he was surrounded by black shirts. That's a good point, Dennis. As he, uh, you know, sometimes you tend to lax on the pitch man once they break the line of scrimmage. One yard gain, second and nine from the 31. Hodges under center, two men in the backfield from the eye. Two men wide. Back to pass, looking for receivers. Screen pass over to the far side. Zambrano has it. Slips away from a tackler and down, brought down on the 36-yard line. Kevin Kelly, Marcus Ray in on the stop for Texas City. That'll make it third and four. Ball spotted at Herford's own 36-yard line. Clock ticking down. Three minutes, 57 seconds here remaining in the third quarter. Texas City on top, 27-14. Hodges back under center in the eye. A man wide on each side. Checks his defense, dries his hands. Man in motion is Castillo. Goes to the far side. Two men on the far side now. Play comes to the near side. It's going to be a count. Oh, nice job me. by Tito Ramirez. Just as Hodges gets to the line of scrimmage, Ramirez, I'm sorry, yeah, Tito right. Ramirez wraps his arms around him and brings him down. Right, they're trying to run the option just right down the line. And he's taken down at, for actually back to the line of scrimmage. And that brings on the punting unit of the herd. Maybe one yard on the game. Fourth and three now from their own 37. Anthony Tranchina standing back at his own 35-yard line as Eddie Lacy again set to do the punting chores. He's inside his own 25 at the 23. Snap is good. He puts it up, a high kick, but short as it's going to hit the ground at the 40 and take a Texas City bounce. But right there, Johnny on the spot is George Castillo to stop the ball. Texas City will have the ball first and 10 at their own 39-yard line. 25-yard kick, and that goes to Texas City's advantage as they are able to take it, take a little better field position than they started last time. Last time, they took over here on the 12 and had to go 88 yards in four plays. Now they start at the 39. Little discussion going on on the field among the officials. See how they're, see what they're going to sort out here. A flag now that I see is back at the 43-yard line. It's going to be against Texas City is the call. Man, Dennis, if I'm not mistaken, that's liable to be the – is that the first penalty on uh, Texas City tonight? I want to say that it is. Just got through uh, talking about the beautiful field position that they have, and now that's going to be uh, dented a little bit as the official steps back to the 29-yard line. So not so shabby. As I say, they started their last position possession on the 12. This one on the 39. Two minutes, 55 seconds. Texas City on top, 27, 14. Anthony Tranchina comes out wide to the near side. Michael Jackson in the slot. Fisher and Gorham in the backfield as Charles Dotton under center. Checks the Hereford defense, takes the snap. Gorham up the middle. He's across the line of scrimmage to the 35 and squirts out to the 36. A nice gain of six or seven yards for Frank Gorham on the first down play. Just following behind Roy Swan, E.J. Whitley, and Carl Fisher. Up the middle of the line, and he's going to pick up seven. And that's, again, has been Texas City's uh, glory tonight, just basically grinding it out up the middle. Have gotten a few little bumps outside. Carl Fisher scoring on two uh, counter plays as he bumps outside and takes a touchdown. But uh, just been grinding it out all night. Second and three from the 36 as Fisher goes in motion. He gets the call on the misdirection. He's outside. He's going to have the first down, 40, 45, 50, Still on his feet and finally brought down at the 45-yard line in Hereford territory. <laughs> what a block. You left at the same block I am. I am too. E.J. Willie <laughs> gets a block. That's kind of at the end of the play. Just sets 
on a Hereford herd, whiteface on his tail. <laughs> what a nice block to spring Fisher to the outside, and he picks the first down and some more on the 19-yard carry. That puts the ball right on the 45-yard line, the Hereford 45, as the clock ticks with 2.24 and counting to play here in the third quarter. Texas City comes to the line of scrimmage. Anthony Tranchina out wide to the near side. Michael Jackson in the slot as Dotton comes to the line of scrimmage. Gives it to Gorham right up the middle. Gorham gets hit at about the 42. Uh, still nice. on his feet and squirts forward to the 40-yard line. Initial hit by number 55, Daniel Fangman, the leading tackler, leading tackler and nose guard for the herd. Bounces off of that hit and still able to pick up about four more yards. He's hit at the line of scrimmage by Fangman and turns it into a five-yard gain. That's right, a nice five-yard gain. Second and five from the 40. The ball sitting just outside the 40, the nose of the ball on the 40-yard line as Anthony Lazarin comes wide to the near side and Michael, uh, Kevin Johnson in the slot. Fisher, the blocker, Gorham with the ball, runs into one of his own men, gets across the 40 to the 39, and that's all it's going to be as not much room there for Frank Gorham on that second down play. That's going to bring up third and four. Roy Swan, a little slow to get up on that play. You don't like to see that if you're a Sting fan. He's back, he stays in the games, back in the huddle. But that's, uh, you don't want to lose that boy. We've got a minute six. Clock fixing to be under a minute here to play in the third period. Dotton brings his team to the line. Got two men to the near side. Tranchina and Jackson. Fisher goes in motion to the near side. And we've got a flag on the play. And that flag stops the play. I believe that's going to be illegal shift. Or motion there, we'll see. Dead ball procedure against Texas City. That'll back it up five. So Texas City penaltyless the whole game up until this drive, and they've seen two penalties that have set them back here in this lone drive. Ball will be uh, marked off from the 39-yard line back to the 44, and it will remain third down. So that puts us back to third and third and nine from the 44. Need to get down to the 30, about the 35 yard line for the first down. Inside a minute now here we're playing the third quarter as Texas City Dotton in the shotgun takes the snap. We've got flags again as the play is stopped. Just as the ball is snapped, the flags come down. And looks like Texas City is going to walk back another five yards, another Procedure call against the Sting. And I'm not going to say anything else about penalties. <laughs> <laughs> and that'll now make it third and 14 for the Sting. Moves the ball back. Still in Hereford territory, but just barely at the 49-yard line. Gorham goes out. Fisher comes in. So we'll see a lone back set here. Fisher, the lone man in the backfield. Michael Jackson wide to the near side. Jonathan Bell in the slot. Dotton under center. Gives it right up the middle to Fisher, and he's going to be up to the 45, and that's it. He'll get back to the original line of scrimmage, and that'll be all that he'll get there as the rain starts to come down again. It'll be up fourth down, fourth and 10 for Texas City as they started a little something on that drive but just couldn't quite keep it moving, and that's going to be the end of the third quarter. We're going to take a break and be back with the fourth and final period. Texas City 27, Hereford 14. This is your Sting Sports Network. I taught my boys when they were young about quality of service under this old shade tree in our yard. Tommy, Toby, and Jerry each carried that hands-on experience to their dealership over at Hammond Auto Park in Texas City. Whether it's that brand new car or that old jalopy that you just can't stand to part with, you'll find the best and friendliest service at Hammond Auto Park in Texas City. Mama, we're, we're done. done. Can, Can we, we go, go eat now? Brick Houses Radiator Shop at 4306 FM 1765 in Texas City has all the right tools and the newest up-to-date equipment to repair or replace your radiator. Strickhausen's Radiator Shop uses ultrasonic baths for all of its floor cleaning and recycles all of its old antifreeze to protect the environment. Strickhausen's Radiator Shop repairs plastic tanks and will dispatch for its commercial customers. Get it from a pro at Strickhausen's Radiator Shop, 935-5975. We've got 12 minutes of action left here 
in the fourth period. Texas City set the punt, fourth and ten. The ball's on the 45-yard line. Bobby Garza puts the foot into a nice high punt. Slade Hodges going to let it get, goes out of bounds. We'll see where they mark it. It'll be inside the 10. It's a very generous. No, 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 no. He's, he's gonna, walking he's back gonna up. He's going to walk up. He's going to do his little acting thing here, and he's going to still walk in finally at the 14-yard <laughs> line. Those referees got to have a flair. Yeah, look at me. Look at me. I'm fixing to make a call. Yeah, well, <laughs> big deal. Ball sits on the 14-yard line as uh, Garza's punt towards the coffin corner goes out of bounds. Does what it needs to. Uh, 41-yard punt gets it inside the 20. Again, as we said, first and 10 at the 14-yard line is where Herford will have the ball. They go to work, three men to the near side. Cody Hodges with the man in the backfield with him, the man to the far side. They're starting out their drive here at the 14. Hodges calls his own number, go to the far side. He's oh, caught the backfield, Jason Daly. Nice job by Jason Daly to just shun the blocker, which was the running back, and just goes right there to Hodges, a loss of four on the play. Actually, we'll call it three on the play. Actually, they're going to give him forward Boy, progress. They sure are. <laughs> Very Good generous night. mark. One Just yard loss. <laughs> about a foot loss, which it really was much more than that. I'm not sure how they came up with that mark. But anyway, second down and 10 is what the clock says. So it really wasn't even a loss. Yep. Three men to the near side, one to the far. Cody Hodges with one man in his backfield. From the shotgun, looks back, has some time, steps out of the pocket, up in, is going to scramble, hit oh. by Tito Ramirez, and then hit hard. He is hit by two or three black jerseys after Tito Ramirez gets there first. As I say that, he may have ducked that hit. I think he might It looked like he took it all. That's going to bring up third down, third and a long three for the herd. The ball sitting at the 21-yard line. Nimble-footed Hodges picks up the six, six on the carry as he just uh, comes out of the pocket. George Castillo, number one, brings the play in from the sideline. Third and three for the herd. Three to the far side, one to the near side. Hodges wipes his hands and then has to move the towel out of the way. From the shotgun, low snap, going to go out to the flats to Zambrano. Zambrano has some room. Excuse me, that's Lopez. Lopez has the first down. He's tripped up over there by Marcus Diaz, but not after he picks up a white face first down. Ball we spotted at the 33-yard line. So a nice gain on the play. It's one of the favorite passes that Hodges likes to throw, just out immediately, one step drop and over into the flat. And that was not Zambrano, that was Tony Lopez, number eight for the herd. And they move out of the uh, bad field position that they started with. After three quarters, Tech City's almost doubled in total yardage, that of Herford, 329 to 151. Hodges, More. excuse me, two men to the far side, two men to the near side, lots of time, hits his, his alternative man over in the flat, that's Zambrano, and Zambrano is gonna pick up about seven on the little flick pass over into the flats. Stop made by Warren Wilson, number eight for the Stings, but not before the nice seven yard pickup. Ball's at the 41 yard line and Herford on the move. They started this drive at their own 14 yard line. Right, they basically just go to the little uh, pressure valve over Zambrano over on the far sideline. Picks up some nice yardage, second and three. Hodges in the shotgun again, double wide outs to both sides. The snap, Hodges takes a step back. It's Come the back screen, screen pass is set up. Jason Daly's oh, at home. Nice job by Jason Daly, and he gets some help by Nathan Hardwick and company to finish him off is number four, Cody Marsh. The little comeback the screen reception. was read like a newspaper by yes, Jason Daly. He stayed home in his easy chair and read that, sniffed that one out. Nice job by Jason. That'll bring up third and seven for Herford. As number three, J.P. Holman brings the next play in. Nice job, as we said again, Jason Daly on the stop. Got some help. Got a little help from his friends on Got that one. Got a little one. help from his friends. That's right. Hodges up to the line. Two men to each side. Zambrano, the man in the backfield. Going to look to the far side. Got some pressure. Looks long. In and out of the hands of Cody Marsh. And then Cody Marsh is leveled, yes, taken to is. the turf by Jonathan. Marcus Diaz. And no. he doesn't pop up. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. He's getting up slow. He did get up. Jonathan Bell lost the foot. Well, okay, uh, just a shoot. That's just a shoot. <laughs> I tell you what, though, Cody Marsh, uh, ball in and out of his hands. He uh, just uh, had the first down yardage. Yes, he just did. Just wasn't able to hang on to the ball. And yes, he, he paid did. for it dearly. And the Sting defense gets a standing O from the crowd on the far side as the herd will have to punt. 
Anthony Tranchina standing back at his own 25-yard line, the line drive punt. Tranchina comes up, thinks about taking it on the line, and he says, no, let's back up. It rolls inside the 20. Boy, a huge roll for Eddie Lacy. Not a very good-looking punt. No, it wasn't. But it gets the yardage. It was short enough that Tranchina probably pretty smartly decided not to try and field it as he was running up pretty quick. Ends up being a huge punt uh, as the ball is stopped dead at the 15-yard line. We'll call that a 59-yard punt. Ball will be placed down at the 15-yard line, and the Stings will take over from there. Eight minutes and 43 seconds remaining in our ball game, and again, we've got a late night here. You know, these folks are going to be back on the road. Probably won't get on the road till well after 11 o'clock. So uh, keep them in your prayers and in your mind. Texas City on top, 27-14. Dotton comes to the line of scrimmage. Tranchina wide to the near side. Gives the ball to Gorham up the middle. Gorham's across the 20, still on his feet, and finally brought down from behind at the 25-yard line. A nice 10-yard run for Frank Gorham. Right at the first down marker. Yes, it is. The officials take an eyeball to it, and yes, they say first down as Gorham just goes right behind the blocks of Aaron Flanagan and company on the left side of that line for the first down. Clock still runs. You know, wouldn't be such a bad deal. Wouldn't hurt my feelings if we just went ahead and did about an eight-minute drive here. Eight minute and 21 seconds wouldn't be would be uh, would be just fine. That would work for me. Jamie Spencer <laughs> breaks the huddle first for the Sting. Anthony Lazarin comes wide to the near side on the first down play. Two men in the backfield. Gorham and Fisher got the two tight ends set here. Give to Fisher, first man through. He's going to be stood up at the line of scrimmage and squeaks for maybe a pickup of a yard, maybe two. On the play, down to the 30, excuse me, the 27-yard line. Bring up second down, and the clock will continue to tick. And that's uh, really kind of what the doctor ordered here, is just, a, as Ronnie said, a clock-eating drive. What a deal. What a day. Texas Bowl 4A Division I State Championship. It has been a, a uh, just been a neat season. Yes, it's been it a lot has. of fun to follow. Yes, it has. Teams of the line of scrimmage, Dotton under center, checks the defense. Fisher goes in motion, the pitch to Gorham, trying to get outside. He cuts it up to 30, got still on his feet, spins forward, 35. He's going to have the first down. What an incredible run. we got a flag back in the backfield, though. Got a flag. Sitting back at the 23-yard line is a little, little yellow hanky. And that, you hate to take away such a spirited run. Uh, Frank just, boy, I tell you what, that's that's true. Tough break for the Stings. But that one's going to come back as Frank had a great run of about 15 yards or close to it. Off or not on the illegal block. That moves the line of scrimmage back inside the 20 to the 17 yard line. So Texas City now, instead of a first down, will have second and 18 from their own 17 yard line. As the team comes to the line of scrimmage, Michael Jackson goes wide to the far side, Anthony Lazarin to the near side. Texas City stays with the power eye. Dotton, wraparound draw, gives it to Fisher. Smelled out, but he's at 20, 25, 30, 40, 45, beats the man, 50, 45, still on his feet. Still he his lowers feet. his head across the 40 to the 37-yard line. What a great run by Carl Fisher. One man saw the wraparound draw coming right at the line of scrimmage, but couldn't stop him, and all the way down to... The 40, I'm sorry, the 37-yard line. You get to watch this on TV. Tony Lopez, number eight, tries to hit him, hit him down the field. And I tell you what, Carl Fisher almost takes his shoulder off. A missed tackle yeah. there. Expected as number nine. That's Chase Reeves. Wow. And I tell you what, Fisher just bowls him over. For 46 yards on the run. That puts the ball again, as we said, first and 10 as the rain comes down on top of the Herford head. Boy, it, I tell you what. Carl Fisher has just been unbelievable tonight. Yes, he has. First and 10 at the Herford 37-yard line. Dotton mishandles the snap, but gets a hold of it and gives it out to Gorham. Gorham's across the line of scrimmage and gets across the 35 down to the 34-yard line. A gain of only three. I tell you what, that was disaster. <laughs> oh, man. Was knocking, disaster was knocking as the ball slipped out of Dotton's hand. Did a great job of getting the handle on it. Well, I tell you what, you said the rain is coming, and you're exactly right. You can't really see it on the TV screen, but I tell you what, it is pouring down on the field right now, and that's tough to handle the ball. There's no way that you sitting out there during the, during the uh, huddle, there's no way that you can get it dry. Anthony Tranchina comes wide to the near side. 
on the second and six play. Ball on the 33-yard line. Dotton drops the ball, and I believe Herford has got it. It looks like a white jersey fell on it, but now the Texas City guys are saying they have it. Oh, what a – and they do. Big break. Woo, I'll I'll tell you what. You, Frank Gorham. Frank Gorham must have got in there and gone with the WFL <laughs> because I, I saw a white jersey fall there. That's going to make it third down, third and ten, as with all that rain, and they're not putting any kind of a towel or anything on the ball to protect it from the weather, and that's going to bring up, again, third and ten from the 37. Frank Gorham now has 183 yards. Carl Fisher has 169 on the night. Impressive. Jackson and Lazarin come to the near side. Dotton rolls to the near side. Got a big block. Dotton still on his feet. Tries to cut back. He's going to get maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe picked up a yard. But that's going to bring up fourth down. That's and a, just little, outside the 35-yard line, that would that would make it a long field goal yes, attempt. Yes, it would. In, a, a, in the rain. Yes, it would. And I don't believe that's going to happen. That would uh, actually at the ball. It said at the at the 36-yard line would be over a 50-yard attempt. So Texas City uh, discussing it on the far side. If you're just tuning in, wondering what's going on, we got a football game on our hands here. Texas City in the state championship game against the Herford Herd. That's right. Clock. The uh, the 25-second uh, clock is down to seven, and basically Texas City is just going to take a penalty here to give them a little bit of more room. Uh, for Bobby Garza to, to put a kick in there. So there's the flag as the clock goes to zeros. They'll back it up five yards. There, the clock stops at four minutes and nine seconds to play in the contest. That's Texas good. City on top, 27 to 14. That's some good clock management right there. Go yes, ahead and let is. that let, take that penalty. Five yards is not going to hurt you as you got to punt the ball away anyway. Ball now will be sitting at the 41-yard line. And so Garza will be looking to make another coffin corner kick as he's done so effectively this whole year. Back deep is, I believe that's number 17. That's Slade Hodges. He's standing at the 10-yard line. Garza does a nice job of fielding the kick, fielding the snap. The ball is going to hit about the five-yard line and take it. Hold up, ball. Bounce. Hold up, ball. Oh, nice, nice job. job. What Michael a great Jackson job. Hits it out of the end zone. Oh, no. Uh, oh, oh, oh. No, he's no. A touchback. What a great job by Michael Jackson. Is that? Yes, but, I, but yeah, they're saying it was in the end zone, so it'll come out to the 20 yard line. I thought he had it. Michael Jackson as he rushes into the end zone, tips the ball back out and would have pinned the herd way back at the three yard line. Pinned but the herd. Pinned to the herd. What a great play on the <laughs> work, man. We've got three minutes and 43 seconds to play in this division one 4A Texas Bowl. Just announced official attendance here for this game at 11,852. And you know, couldn't well that the weather kept lots of folks away from this one. <laughs> I guarantee it. It has been nasty all day long. The Herd come to the line of scrimmage with 342 to play. They're down by 13 as they send three wide outs to the far side, two to the near side. Hodges, the lone man in the back foot in the shotgun, takes the snap, fires it out to the near side, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. That's number eight, Tony Lopez. Texas City had that one smelled out anyway. He wouldn't have got very far if he did hold on to it. Well, that's right. He was all covered up by Warren Wilson, Nathan Hardwick, Jason Daly, and company. Lots of black shirts over in that neighborhood. So Hodges with just a quick out there. Incomplete pass brings up, stops the clock at 338, brings up second down and 10. Again, ball's on the 20. Three men to the near side, two to the far side. Hodges is by himself in the shotgun. Has some time, looks downfield. Now he's been pushed out of the pocket. Oh, he's gonna be hit as he lets go of the ball and he's gonna, the ball's gonna be way short. But I tell you what, Mitchell, Mitchell good night. put a huge hit on him just as he let go of the ball. Good night puts his head into the chest, right in the numbers of Hodges and the ball falls Helplessly to the ground. I tell you what, folks, if you cover, if you watch Texas high school football, you'd be looking next year for the Hereford Herd. That's right. Cody yeah. Hodges, number 10, and his brother, number 17, both are juniors. Uh, Romero Zambrano is a junior, number five. Tony Lopez, uh, he's a senior. Lots of juniors are having a lot of playing time tonight and this season. Third and 10 for the Herd. In the shotgun is Hodges, takes the snap. 
Looking for a receiver. He's got some time now. Lots of time as he throws the ball downfield. Oh, oh, in and out of the hands of Jonathan Bell. And Kevin Kelly was right behind him. And, and Bell's deflection of the ball took it away from Kevin Kelly. That's right. Bell actually a little upset with himself. Thinks that he might could have had that ball. And had it not been for his tip, Kevin Kelly might have had that ball. But that's okay. That brings up a fourth down. Fourth and ten as good pressure put on there by Nick Felder. Texas yeah. City has done a great job of putting pressure on, on uh, Hodges tonight, especially here in the second half. As his pass percentage of, his percentage of completions is down now to below 60%. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Shame. It's terrible. He's only completed 57% oh of his Oh, my passes. goodness. <laughs> Punt is away. Nobody back deep. Texas City's going to let the ball bounce. It bounces at the 50s. Texas City will still have good position, field position, as it dies at the 43-yard line. So Texas City beginning to smell a little bit of victory, but I tell you what, they're still with a, a, now, a passing offense like Herford has. It ain't over till it's over. Well, that's right. The main thing at this point is just hold on to the ball. Just hold on to the ball. And with a little bit of rain falling, that's uh, really, that's kind of a tall order. Yes, it is. As Dotton had really for the first time tonight that I can recall, had several tough times of, of uh, holding on to the, the ball. snap. Exactly. Uh, actually even dropped one. Gorham with Johnny on the spot to uh, cover it up. First and 10 for the Stings at their own 43. Fisher and Gorham in the backfield. Tranchina wide to the near side as Fisher goes in motion. The pitch to Gorham. He cuts it up. Spins off of a would-be tackler at the 40 two-yard line and goes across the 45 to the 46-yard line. Brought down by Daniel Fangman, senior nose guard, number 55 for the herd. Fangman is uh, not scared to hit. No, he's Put not. Pretty, pretty, good, pretty good lick on Frank on that carry. And the clock is a friend to Texas City at this point. Ticks down to 2 minutes and 49 seconds. Continues to tick. Texas City on top, 27 to 14 as we have a a little over two minutes remaining in this Texas Bowl contest. Three men in the backfield. Gorham, Fisher, and Bell. Pitch goes to Bell. Bell to the near side. Breaks it. He's picked up at about the 47-yard line. He's going to be right at the first down marker. Sure Might is. be a hair shy, but uh, not much. It's the first down, says the man in white hat. So Texas City now going to the three-man backfield. Basically, they're just going to sit and grind this one out. Clock stops for the chains to move. And so now we're at two minutes and 18 seconds. Ronnie is going to depart to uh, head down to the floor of Texas Stadium to grab some interviews following the game. I'll stay right here with you. Three men in the backfield. Dotton gives to Bell again to the far side. Bell into that interior of the line in the left side. And he's going to pick up two tough yards the rain is falling and the clock is now stopped we've got a timeout on the field timeout heard and i've got a score texas city 27 herford 14 we've got a, just under two minutes left be right back being the best takes persistence patience and great perseverance the young people of texas city high school exemplify those attributes both on the field of play and most especially in the classroom Texas First Bank, with its 12 locations in Galveston County, are always there for our area young people and their families with generous loan assistance for business development, home improvement, automobile, our school and student loan needs. Helping build the young lives of Galveston County one bright future at a time, we are Texas First Bank, equal housing lenders and members of the FDIC. At Phillips Pizza and Seafood, try one of our famous four boys or pasta dishes. No place around makes a better pizza. And our seafood, pasta, and mouth-watering poor boys will make you forget all about those fast food places. Our food and our service just can't be beat. You're gonna love what you eat. Open seven days a week at our eight convenient locations. Back in Irving, Texas, here with the Texas Bowl. Division 1 4A state championship, Texas City on top, 27-14, and in control of the ball. Snap to Dotton, Dotton pitches to Bell, Bell gets outside, he's going to pick up, going to be pushed out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Looked like he might have a corner there, but the field is so mucky and slick, they're just not able to cut up. 
But that one could have been very easily been six. Not able to get the corner. We've got uh, chain stop. I mean, excuse me, the clock stops to move the chains. We've got a minute 55 to play in our contest. Folks, it has been an awesome season for the Stings. They are just a few minutes away, a couple of minutes away, if barring a huge catastrophe of closing out the very first ever undefeated season in Texas City history. The rain now just continues to fall. It has even gotten a little heavier right here in the end. Puddles have gathered over here on both, both sides. Three men in the backfield. Dotton bobbles the sick, bobbles the ball. Bell gets the call up the middle. He'll pick up about seven down to the 27, 26 yard, 27 yard line. And the clock will continue to tick as the carry was just short of the first down. Second down and two. Ball sits again at the 20, 28 yard line. Texas City on top, 27-14. It has been a dogfight here tonight. The herd has come and they have, have we're ready to play. It's been a tough, tough fight tonight. Texas City again, two tight end sets, full house backfield. Dotton gives again to Bell. Bell follows behind his blockers, picks up the first down, and just a little bit more, he'll pick up five on the carry down to the 21 yard line. And the crowds on the crowd on the other side, dressed in black and orange, begin to go a little bit rowdy as the clock is down to 110. And we've got a timeout heard as they take, well, they've got still another timeout left. They take their uh, next to last timeout. We're going to take it with them. Texas City 27, Earth for 14. This is your Sting Sports Network. Brick Houses Radiator Shop at 4306 FM 1765 in Texas City has all the right tools and the newest up-to-date equipment to repair or replace your radiator. Strickhausen's Radiator Shop uses ultrasonic baths for all of its floor cleaning and recycles all of its old antifreeze to protect the environment. Strickhausen's Radiator Shop repairs plastic tanks and will dispatch for its commercial customers. Get it from a pro at Strickhausen's Radiator Shop, 935-5975. bring it back to the line again the herd has one timeout left a minute 10 on the clock ball sitting at the 20 21 yard line first and 10 give again goes to bell no doubt about where we're going with the ball bell slices up in the middle he'll pick up about four on the carry and the clock will continue to tick and the herd again takes their fi last and final timeout and we're going to take it with them we'll take a quick bake break with our to hear a word from our sponsors this is your sting sports network Benny's Auto Repair, serving the auto repair needs of Texas City and the greater Galveston County area for over 19 years, has a staff of qualified technicians and 20 service bays, along with 24-hour record service. Benny's Auto Repair is the largest independent auto repair business in the area. Built on reputation and friendly staff service, Benny's Auto Repair has the technology and the know-how to meet your auto repair needs. Stop by Benny's at 801 9th Avenue North in Texas. Texas City is going to take a knee, but actually as they do, the snap is mishandled, and Charles Dotton, I believe, is able to quickly throw himself on the ball and retain possession, but uh, Texas City basically, actually that Carl Fisher is the one who comes up with it as Texas City just trying to take a knee to run this clock out. 41 and ticking. What a game it has been. The key to the game again, Texas City's put a lot of pressure on 
the uh, passing attack of the herd has just ground out this ball game on the on the on the ground. No yards in the air. All of it has been on the ground. 22 seconds remaining. We'll have one more snap. We'll take a knee, and then Texas City will be crowned the champions of 1999, the last Division I District 4A champion of the millennium. And clock is at 9, 8, 7, 6. It's going to continue to tick. They're going crazy all over the wet floor. Coach Dowling has just been doused. And just about every one of the guys have gone down into the end zone, and they're just doing belly dives down into the Cowboys end zone. Every one of them, just like going on a slip and slide. Looks like a lot of fun down there. Hey, what a game. Some of the guys that didn't get playing time want to get their jerseys wet, and they have done a great job. Texas City on top as we finish this Texas Bowl, 27 to 14. Let's recap a little bit of the scoring. There in the first period, Texas City initially takes the very first drive and marches seven plays, 70 yards, and they put their first points on the board with six minutes and 10 seconds remaining in the first quarter. That highlight of that play or that series was Carl Fisher, a 31-yard counter play as he uh, takes it down and for the touchdown. Garza with a point after. Herford wastes no time as they strike right back. They score five plays, 39 yards, two minutes and 51 seconds on the drive. Cody Hodges, as uh, as they uh, actually, we're gonna we're gonna stop this uh, recap right now. We're gonna take it down to the field to Ronnie Hazard on the field. Ladies and gentlemen. Coach Rusty Dowling being handed the state championship trophy. Going to give it over to Marcel. There you go, Marcel. Show it off, buddy. Show it. goes wild as the announcer has just announced Texas City the Division I 4A state champs and you heard it right here on uh, instant replay as the uh, Sting fans are just enjoying reveling in the second state championship in three years again back to the scoring recap Texas City taking the lead in the first quarter with the initial drive Herford striking right back Five plays, 39 yards, set up by a great kickoff return by Lopez. Texas City answers back in the second quarter with, again, Carl Fisher dashes 40 yards on the counter play. That, that drive was seven plays, 82 yards. It was set up by a fumble, a herd fumble, down inside the red zone for the herd. And Texas City took over after that Hodges fumble and took it 82 yards in seven plays. Texas City again in the second quarter, scores with four minutes and 20 seconds remaining. Chad Clay blocks a punt as uh, Mitchell Goodnight catches it in the air and runs it on in the end zone, a 12-yard return. And so Texas City takes advantage of that mishap and stays on top 21-7. Herford comes right back again with just under two minutes remaining in the second quarter. 
and scores on a seven-play, 34-yard drive, set up again by a long kickoff return. Hodges with a one-yard run for that touchdown. Texas City comes back with the only score of the second half as they go four plays, 88 yards, their second possession of the half. Frank Gorm with a 63-yard run. Chad Bell, uh, excuse me, Jonathan Bell takes it in uh, from one yard out after that Gorm 63-yard run. And that was basically our last score of the ball game. Texas City uh, held on the defense to uh, shut down the herd pretty well the rest of the second half. Texas City unofficially uh, ends up tonight with 434 yards rushing. And the uh, Herford Herd ends up with 154 yards total. Uh, 74 of that on the ground. Frank Gorm, again, these are a little unofficial, but he has 22 carries, 186 yards. And Carl Fisher with 10 carries for 169 yards. Again, Texas City tonight did it all on the ground. Their time of possession, 27.08. As the herd's time of possession was 20 minutes and 52 seconds. It has been a, just a, 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 an unbelievable season here. And we do want to thank our instant replay staff, Ken and Carolyn Rose, Richard and Yvette Presley, Stan and Diane Young, Brian Martin, Stephen Presley, Lee Lockwood, Mario Lasoya, Chris and Josh Young, John Bartosh, and Tammy Hazard, who uh, served tonight as our director. Listen, it's been a great season, and we, uh, we hope that you'll continue to join us throughout the, uh, the athletic program here at Texas City High School as we follow the baseball, basketball, soccer, softball, and anything else you can throw at us. Uh, we want to be there. But congratulations to the coaching staff, Rusty Dowling, the coaching staff of the Texas City High School and the Division I 4A state champion. We're going to take a break and I'll be right back to you here in just a little bit. This, again... Dennis Johns and Ronnie Hazard, your Sting Sports Network. Back on the floor at Texas Stadium, a little damp here, but do you feel it at all, Mr. Doty? Oh, not at all. It's great to be state champs again. Well, I'll tell you what, it does feel good, doesn't it? it Second does. time in three years. Second time. Got to mean a whole lot. What does it mean to you as a principal of the high school? Oh, it's just wonderful to see our kids do as well as they've done. It's just great for them to be champions. They just I mean, they really deserve it, and it makes my life easy, too. It's, it's wonderful for all of us. That's right. And the way I look at it, too, it's not just a championship for the football team. I mean, the band did a great right. job, the stingerettes, the yeah. cheerleaders. The, it's a school effort by everybody. Uh, yes, it's a victory for everybody. I'm proud of all of our kids. They did a great job. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate yeah. you joining us. We're going to look around. We'll get a minute to get him on on, on the camera here as, as David Simmons is trying to get David Simmons over here and... and and Dorothea Jones White from the school board as well as we'll, uh, we'll see what they have to say about this. Mr. Simmons, congratulations. Great job. We've got Loopy Can too and, and Mr. Wyatt here too. Appreciate you guys. What does this mean for the city of Texas? How does it feel? Hey, first year, not a bad start. I tell you what, this is great for the for the kids and our coaches. Uh, as a former coach, I know how hard these guys work from all year round to prepare our, our, our student athletes for a moment like this. It's just tremendous to see the crowd we've had here tonight and look at the the memories that these students are making tonight. This is something these kids will carry with them for an entire lifetime. I can't imagine the, the joy that they're feeling. It's just a great part to, just fun to, for me to be a part of it. That's right. Well, I'll tell you what, your feelings on the night. I just want somebody to cut the light on on 146, so when we come home, it'll be well lit. Well, there you go. Congratulations, Cyborg. This is a tremendous win for Texas City. Not only is it a tremendous win, win for Texas City, it's a tremendous win for the community as a whole. That's this right. is very enjoyable. I mean, you can't, you can't beat the playing in Dallas Cowboys Stadium. What else can you ask for? That's right. Well, maybe for the rain to stop, but I don't even feel that right now. That's right. That's right. Oh, that's right. I think we got Rusty here <laughs> one more time. Hey, Coach, you feel up to an interview? <laughs> Rusty, great job. I mean, I mean, in the second half, you guys came out and played like fire. Just a super job. Yeah, you know, it was a... Uh, it was a great effort by the kids. I guess the single thing about it is what I, I was telling somebody earlier is with the kids is that they, this group of kids really deserve this because they, they worked so hard. They did so many things right on and off the field. Uh, they, they deserve this, and, and I'm just very, very pleased and happy for them to be a state champion. Well, I'll tell you what, to me, the big the stand out, of course, Frank did his typical, usual, wonderful yeah. job. But did Carl Fisher run the ball great tonight or what? Carl ran hard. Our offensive line came off the ball. Uh, and then, you know, you start and you stop with Frank Gorham. 
I mean, we got, you know, we got the ball with eight, was it 843? Right. And we took a lot of time off the clock and we did what we do, you know, we, we drove the ball. And I guess when we got that ball back and the kids were on the field, I, I just felt like right there, we got a great opportunity to win this thing. So, you know, uh, driving the ball at the end there and doing, you know, how many times have we seen that this year? We've seen that a bunch of times, you know, right. a whole bunch of times. So I, I, uh, I thought that just, a, that, that drive, Daniel, epitomized the whole season. That's right. You know, just line up and run the ball. One thing we noticed different right off the bat, Dennis and I were watching, you guys moved the ball the first offensive series that you had. It. Right. Well, we, we really felt like, now Hereford played tough. They played us as tough as anybody's played all year. They were physical and tough. And that number 40, you know, if I ever see him again, it's going to be too soon. I mean, he was a man, boy. Uh, but, but on our, you know, we gave him some short fields on some of those kickoffs. You know, they return it, and goodness sake, you know, we went at halftime, and we we discussed that, and we got that problem solved. So, because we told them we're going to score again, and hopefully a few more times, we only scored once. And uh, so the kickoff cover team was going to have the opportunity to redeem themselves, and they did. So we were pleased with that. Well, Rusty, great job, man. I really appreciate your time. All right, Ronnie. Thank you, All year long. Super Thank you. Job. Go get some dry clothes yeah. on and enjoy the fire. I will, yeah. Up. Thank great you very job. much. Thank That's you. It. Don't go okay. Here. Man, great job. Oh, great man. job. <laughs> Thank you Ooh, very much. Son, son. Yeah, that you want to come get in here, too? Come, come on. on. Over here. Come, on. Stand come on, Linda. Here with defensive coordinator Tim Finn. Tim, another incredible job by the defense, the whole thing. But, man, you guys had another great game plan tonight. Well, uh, it didn't look that way at the beginning. We had we had a couple tough moments, but... Uh, you know, the, the second half, we played field position. The kids responded real well uh, to our little bit of adjustments. They went and attacked them in the second half. And uh, I tell you, I couldn't be prouder of this group. Uh, no one at the beginning of the year would have predicted that. Uh, I mean, us coming all the way again. And uh, I, I'm just so proud of that group of seniors and the guys that backed them up, the sophomores and uh, juniors that contributed. Well, I'll tell you what, the, Rusty made mention just a minute ago about maybe no more, any more deserving of this than these guys. I tell you what, these guys have worked hard since they were freshmen, probably even since their junior high years, and just the coaches from the junior high on up, just a super job by these guys. Well, they, they have, I mean, just incredible consistency. You know, that they're, they're, uh, they have just played every game. We've had maybe uh, three bad quarters all year. I mean, the kids have just, just been uh, on top of the game all the time. They've prepared real hard, and, and it, it was a little slick tonight at the beginning, of the first, you know, in the first half. I mean, they had to adjust to that. And that's a good offensive team. They spread the field on you, and they, they make you miss. So, uh, I mean, they just did a great job executing the game plan. One thing Dennis and I noticed in the second half, it seemed like every time that Herford got the ball, it started raining again, and then it would stop when we got the ball. So that was a great defensive plan on your, of yours, too. Well, absolutely. <laughs> that, was, that was written in uh, at halftime. We said, <laughs> no, what we told the kids at halftime is we got to come out and we got to play Texas City football. You know, teams that do the kind of things that their offense does, they, they want to spread you out and make you make you a little tentative. So he just told them, we got to play Tech City football in the second half, and I think I feel like we did. We come out and we, can, we got control of the game defensively instead of letting them do what they wanted to. And, uh, and uh, I mean, we just we just played our brand of ball the second That's half. That's right, and so. did a great job of it. So, hey, before we go, who's this guy right here? This is Rogan. Rogan, can you say hello? Hello. Hey, say, <laughs> say who, the camera there. Who's the state champ? Yes, the Stingarees. Say Tech City Sting. Texas City Sting. That's right. Hey, Tim, enjoy this. Linda's here, man. Super job by all you guys. What did I say? <laughs> yeah. You said I, 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 shoot. Hey, just a super job. You guys just enjoy this one. Maybe in some dry clothes in a little bit, but a uh, super job, Tim. It can rain all over. That's right. Don't even feel it, huh? That's Great right. job. Thanks, Thanks a lot, Tim. Appreciate you stopping by. You didn't play, man. Here. <laughs> hey. I'm with you, man. I'm with you. You got us here. I'm here with the, uh, I guess you could say, the heart and soul of Texas City. Uh, man, great game tonight, guys. Tell us, coming into the game, Marcus, I uh, saw you guys popping out there. Was it hitting pretty good? Oh, it was good all night long. We, we knew this was our last game. We had to bring it. We brought it all. Everything we had. The last time we get to play with each other. Most of you guys were on the field as we uh, crowned the last Stingery Championship. Tell me, how does it feel to get number two? I wasn't there last year, but uh, I'm sure it has to be good. He's got to tell you. Oh, I, well, I got in the uh, other year, but this time, you know, I ain't get in. So I just know, these, I, I know these boys were going to come out and uh, play their hard uh, for the team because, you know, 
It's all about Tech City right now, baby. Listen, I tell you what, it's been a great season. Kevin Kelly, tell me your thoughts on a state championship. What's it feel like? It's great. You gotta give it to the Lord, though. He's the one that got us here. He's the one that got us through this. We're number one, baby. What are you gonna do to celebrate? You gonna go to Disney World? I'm gonna go see my grandpa because he couldn't make it to the game. Because he would've got fired because he's been sick and stuff. And I wanna tell my parents and everybody I love them. That's about it. Hey, listen, you guys are fun to watch this year. Tell you what, I tell you, well, something that we've talked about a lot was just uh, the heart. Uh, not a, you know, nobody really stood out. Everybody stepped up every single game. And uh, man, big big man here, John Bell. What's it feel like to run behind Carl Fisher and Frank Gorham? Feel great, feel great. Got a, my first ring. You know, been waiting on this a long time. Ever since August. Ever since August, you guys have put a lot of hard work in. Anything you want to say? Baby. Final thing you say to the fans? Yeah. We want to thank Instant Replay for putting us on every Sunday so we can watch ourselves play ball. <laughs> Instant Replay in the hall. What's up, baby? I'd like to say hello to my grandpa and uh, Miss Dixon. They couldn't make it to the uh, game. What's up, y'all? Grandma, uh, grandma, grandma, grandma. Love you. Hey, I'm going to miss the team. I love you. And I'm uh, going to college, baby. I love you. My aunt, my aunt. All right. Great job, guys. Congratulations. Carl Fisher, man, tonight you really took a load off. Uh, keying on Frank Gorham, you took a load off and stepped up to the challenge. Oh, well, I just had to do what I had to do. I ran as hard as I could. Uh, Frank, I mean, I love being there with him. You know, I blocked for him as hard as I could. I tried to have my best game, seeing that this was the last game I was going to ever have in my high school career. And plus this state, you know, and I had to do my hardest for the fans out there who come every time, every game, you know, help, help us lead us to the victory that we have now. Do you think it was a surprise? Do you think that uh, Herford was looking to, maybe for Frank to be the big ball carrier? You stepping up and doing your chores today. Uh, oh, I know over 150 yards total rushing. Well, at the beginning, I, I believe that it was keying on Frank. But then after halftime, they seen that, you know, that I scored the two, and they started keying on me a little bit more. But I still, I adjusted, and I ran as hard as I could, and I blocked as hard as I could, and I tried to have my best game. I tell you what, Carl, you, uh, the way you play makes a lot of us folks, as we follow you guys, makes us proud. So you guys work hard, and you guys definitely deserve the state championship. Congratulations. All right, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. Texas Bowl champs, the number two. How does it feel? feels wonderful. I, I don't even know what to say right now. It just It's different than two years ago, but this is great. This what? is great. All right, uh, this is Michelle Dowling, of course. Many of you know Coach Dowling's wife. Uh, tell you what, this season didn't have a whole lot of nail biters. We... Uh, pretty well took care of business how do you compare this one to the last one i watched more plays this season than i have before but I, I still hit my eyes quite a bit but it was great it was wonderful and thanks to everybody that came out and watched us it's been fantastic the fingernails kept their touch as yes well. yes and i had the lucky earrings on until i came down tonight i had to take them off i was afraid i'd lose them i have to have them for next year lucky earrings. <laughs> jd one of the men who kept the balls dry jd what's it feel like to win your six, second state championship feels real cool <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, congratulations to the Dowling family. You guys have uh, have made it fun to be a part of Texas City football. Anything else you want to say to the fans? Thanks for everything. Go Sting! Woo! You want to speak? Uh -huh. What's your name? Kristen. 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 Kristen, tell me, what's it feel like to be a part of the state championship? Feels really good. Great. Great. What's it feel like to be on the floor where the Cowboys play? Feels even better. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, you got to go.